Sean, who wants to recap? Uh, let me pull up my notes. Uh, I can do a recap. I think this is, our last one was on the 25th. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, so we started out uh, at the very, uh, the first thing I have is that uh, Carol was noticing on her old pictures of her husband that like, hmm, something looks different now, uh, now that she's kind of been awakened. Um, and then we were, the first things we started doing was we figured out where uh, Milasa's next gig was gonna be at Club Red. Um, and we spent some time like looking, driving around, uh, looking for some of like the homeless followers, um, trying to question them and such. Um, we, we find that they're not like actively recruiting anybody. They're just kind of unfortunate people who have gotten kind of sucked into this charm thing. Um, we also realize that this is kind of a newer phenomenon and that Oliver was among like the first, uh, some of the first ones to get pulled in. Um, we did more investigating. Uh, we end up getting in touch with the head Athens and or head office in Athens and they refer us to a similar case. Um, but there was a bit more obviously predatory. Um, and that one they ended up, uh, confronting with extreme prejudice, uh, the individual in that case. Um, uh, after that, we, oh, Malachi got a vision of the door to, uh, like a door opening and closing on its own. So we realized like, hmm, maybe she is invisible. That could be why we couldn't find her or see her going into the venue. Uh, we stake out the place. We spot like the cellist and the violinist pulling up and write down their license plate and make and model their car and everything else. We kind of stake out the building. Uh, don't have a ton of success in, in catching anyone at that instance. Just find a little more about some of the band members. Um, figure out where the next show is gonna be uh, at the Arizona Wilderness Brewery um, doing some more research, we dig into one of the band members and uh, Nora casually bumps into him at a coffee shop and like chats him up, uh, gets a bit more information out of him. We talk about uh, how he got on, hired on with uh, Mia Lassa and w how she contacts him to tell him where their next gigs are and such, which is very low tech, some just like telegram type things up here under his doorstep like slid under his door um just handwritten uh after that we go to that place try to confront her not with a lot of success uh malachi we find out that she, beer. yeah malachi orders his his root beer which i <laughs> i have my my mug <laughs> that I have left. uh yeah, Malachi orders his root beer while the others, one by one, go up and confront her in varying levels of aggression, <laughs> I guess you could say, of le various levels of like how forward they were with their conversation. Um, she comes off like very kind of full of herself and very like unconcerned with the consequences she doesn't seem to be doing it with the express purpose of hurting people but she doesn't seem to much care if it's hurting people either um she ended up saying something to the effect of like she needs to eat too so we we kind of get the idea that our initial impression of like maybe she was feeding off of them in some way is likely but we also got the information that she does have someone telling her where to go yeah yeah we found that out could also that go that way too yeah, we found out that whatever she was doing in in the city she was in before Phoenix wasn't having this kind of effect. This is new, it, like that effect is new here. Mm -hmm. um, and that she has a, uh, a, manager, uh, like a manager who is, who is getting her, that's how she's getting gigs is via her manager, um, who we don't really have any more information about. 
And I think that was basically where we left it was leaving at the, did we leave that venue that night? Because we realized like, this is kind of a terrible place for a confrontation. I don't know if we left yet, but we did decide not to confront or try to snatch. (laughs) But yeah, so basically we left, I guess. We enjoyed the rest of the day. You finished your brew beer, we went home. (laughs) Yep, okay, great, thank you. Um, Okay, so, (coughs) excuse me, so that's where you're at. So um, so obviously, you know, just, well, I don't even know if you guys verbally threatened her, right? Like, I think. Oh, I did. Just, okay, what did you say? Yeah. I told her that she better stop Vaguely. What she was doing, or we were going to force her to stop. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That seems so, like a pretty blatant threat. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very <laughs> a polite threat. threat. It's, right. it's not. It's not so much. We're going to come to your house. Or we're going to break your leg. It's vague in its in its applica- <laughs> in its pros- procedure, but it's a threat. <laughs> we're gonna do is big okay. so so you guys have, have decided at this point that uh verbal threats apparently are not going to uh persuade her um so what's the game plan from here well she's well. not gonna stop because she doesn't care no. that she's hurting people so mm-hmm. the only way to make it stop is to like enforce it somehow either convince mm-hmm. her to stop give her something else which i can't even begin to think of what or stop her with force or force her to go somewhere else but then that's just putting another city at risk so yeah she she didn't seem to care a whole lot so i don't know how convincing her we're gonna be she didn't seem to want to to want to change too much you guys do know that um, she only affects awakened people or creatures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We frame her for a crime and we throw her in human jail. We get her arrested. My intelligence is plus. Okay, my intelligence is average. We're not we're not thinking of genius plans here. <laughs> or I had I do wonder. Before, wherever she was from, before, she said um, to Nora that she couldn't do this before. So, like, either that means there's no awakened people in whatever city that was, and I feel like that's doubtful. Nora, Sam, how populated are awakened people in the country? (laughs) How, how I was idea, wondering the like, same thing. How unlikely would it be that there would be an entire right. place like that with no thinking. awakened people? Uh, yeah. yeah, give me a history check, Malachi and Nora. Oh, okay. Because I have been two places where <laughs> there are awakened people, and that's where I was awakened, and then here. <laughs> 23. 18. Okay, um, so you, you know that the distribution of awakened people is not like a normal distribution. It's not like one out of every hundred everywhere. Um, like it, it, you do know that it tends to be more where people are like creative and artistic um, and more where people have like had some hardship and difficulty and that sort of thing. So um, you do know from, from your parents that um, there are definitely towns. You don't think there are, there are actually cities where there aren't any awakened people, but you definitely know that there are towns where there are fewer, much, much fewer awakened than um, other places. And in the valley, um, there's quite a few of those uh, little communities that don't have very many or any awakened um, people. The one that comes most prominently to mind is Goodyear. It's a suburb that's just like super vanilla, Um, just, 100% 100% suburbs, nothing interesting happens there, no one interesting lives there. Um, and you know that you remember your parents saying like, oh yeah, there's, like we never have any cases out in good year because nothing happens out there. It's just a bunch of norms. Um, there are a few others uh, around and about, but that's probably the largest community in the valley. Okay. Then I guess it's not impossible that it was just purely her geographical location that Held her back from causing all this chaos. 
I just, I was just thinking that maybe it was whoever this manager person is was kind of amplifying it somehow, but if there's another plausible explanation, we might not need to go down that avenue if we can figure out a more concrete and faster way to stop her. But how would we convince her to like move out of our town? Well, she doesn't care about people. So if you try to go the convincing route, it's not gonna be for the safety or the goodness of others. It's gonna to have to be you give her something that she desires more than staying here. So, but she needs to eat. So it has to be some sort of guarantee of food. Yeah, Carol or Sarah? Uh, yeah, question, yeah. Uh, a clarification question, because we know that she only affects Awaken, but did we figure out if she's only feeding off of Awaken, or is she still gaining something from being around non-Awaken? Like, if we were to separate her from, like, if we were to put her somewhere where it's just unawakened people or just normal humans, would she still feed and thus be content to stay there, or would she leave and have to go find Awaken and start the cycle again? I'm not sure that you guys know that. I don't, I don't know that you asked that or not. Okay, I'll post that in character then, if that's the case. I'm sure we can clarify that or not. Ooh, I mean, uh, she seen, didn't she? Re I think she really likes all the attention. Um, no, no, you give me an arcana check on that one. Oof, not great. Uh, 10. 10. Mm -hmm. Yeah, difficult to say. Interesting. Interesting because she, while she does like it, she does like to feed, she does like an audience. If we could promise her a safer yet bigger audience, she might go for that, depending. As long as she's still able to gain sustenance, that seems to be her number one. Like, if we can't even guarantee some way for her to continue feeding, she's not going to go for anything we might offer her. <laughs> so, something tells me she likes all the attention as well as the the feeding like right, I think that's why it's I not said, just the one or the other yeah that's why I said uh, if she can feed from normal people but we can provide her a bigger audience she might go for that gotcha. as long as she can still feed that's, that's yeah. I, don't know, I don't think she likes any of us I don't know how willing she's going to be to listen <laughs> to, to all, any convincing mm -hmm. we would try right it could be an either or scenario we give her another option or be like okay well now we're enemies and now we're gonna have a war so yeah which would be bad for publicity we hire a publicist who starts <laughs> shit talking her oh sorry malachi who starts bad talking her uh, <laughs> so my first job you know, is I, I, I go to school whatever i am I this say, facebook <laughs> campaign yeah we, i hear we, those we, words all the time at school it's okay fits. culture you're 10 <laughs> Do you think 10 year olds don't know what those words are? I did not know when I was 10 years old, okay? <laughs> I was an angel at 10, all right? So, Malachi just points to the horns. That means nothing, <laughs> Malachi. <laughs> <laughs> That's like stereotypical to your own, <laughs> whatever. Which means I'm allowed to say it. That's yeah. not what that means. <laughs> How do you think I get all the guts? <laughs> you know, the guys are like, 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 <laughs> like, the club, you're like, shit, and oh, I no, that out of touch with the youth these days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This explains why I've seen zero guys here. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I get it. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> if we're not going to talk her out of going, mm -hmm. are we going to, I don't know, find, like, threaten her to go somewhere else? I don't know how much threatening power we have. Like, we can't, I don't think she's physically threatened by us, like, physically. So, we would need to threaten her another way. I'm still leaving towards the smear campaign, the cancer culture. Does we besmirch her name until she leaves. But I don't think that would matter to the people who are already enthralled by her. You're going to come no matter what no. we say. So she's still going to keep that crowd unless we pick them off one at a time like we did with uh, Oliver and um, Maurice. So I wonder Ask if she left Pick them off one at a time. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> How many times do you think we before we get caught? Walmart <laughs> only like, carries so many zip ties. <laughs> I do own a hundred zip ties now. We could get at least a hundred of them. 
But like, can she willingly, now that this, I, I suppose she can willingly let go of them. So. How does, to force her to let them go. Does Pi Squared like have any other people that work with us or another? What's uh, the closest okay. city so we can get some like backup or mm -hmm. help? Yeah, you guys, uh, Mr. Vaughn told you you are basically on your own. Uh, All Mr. right. Vaughn. Yeah, they, if they wouldn't send anybody to help us figure out the rest of the business, I don't think they're going to help us with this. Right. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't even send anyone to help you find your parents, for God's sake. Which we're still upset about. <laughs> it's been like a week. Is there an ma anti-magic collar we can just go swoop and then the magic just dies? Is that a thing? If it's not a thing, it should be a thing. And it's that seems like the kind of thing, if it exists, that it would cost a lot of money. I mean, I think that's something Pi Squared should invest in because let me tell you, we have sunk in a lot of hours and we could have just been snap done. <laughs> yeah, that also sounds like the kind of thing that would be very goblin market. Yeah, but is it, is it even a thing? Is it a thing? Does it exist? I don't know. Uh, most yeah, no, most not, things I are a thing in the goblin know. market. You know that there are certainly items that can deny people magical powers. Um, you know, you've never seen one. You don't know what one would look like. Um, yeah, you you can go to very deep, dark, dangerous places to find them. Okay. I think that might be scarier to try and go get than it would be worth. Well, I don't know how we're going to convince her to just let them go. What I almost think for her idea. Let me hear it. I, I you know, I'm not sure if there's anything we can't offer her, but I almost think that going after the manager might be our best strategy. I mean, if we can't offer her anything, but the manager is the one pulling the strings. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't know anything about him, which means maybe mm -hmm. that there's, he'd be, you know, they'd be someone that could be potentially negotiated with or, again, threatened if, um, yeah. you know, it turns out they are someone more malicious, malicious than me and Lhasa, because eventually she's a threat. I mean, as much as I hate to say it, you know, we I mean, might have to take her out. Yeah, but, but if she's not being malicious and he is, or they are, I don't know what we think of manager. Well, Might be a but, chasing. well, we can't even find Melasa, Melasa during the day, though. How are we going to find this manager and we don't even know what they look like? <laughs> Question. Uh, how would the, like, how are things like this charm that's being put on the people who are pretty much all awakened people how is that sort of thing viewed by the awakened community oh, that's a good point like how does the awakened community as a whole like like mm. take things that affect itself like the, the community yeah that's actually a good way. question and, and you do know this so you know that uh there is a feudal system in place for um many of the people of the world below um, but it's primarily in place for uh, people who matter. So from a mechanical standpoint, that's right. like fourth level and above who like are not a part of the real world anymore. Like they're treated like bums and whatnot. So the, the you think that um, if someone important got ensnared by this, one of two mm. things would happen. One is probably they would just get it dispelled because they're powerful enough or they know powerful enough people to make that happen very quickly. Or that, yeah, one of these feudal lords would, would take issue with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and but do, all of the venues that she's been hitting are young college kids right. who so, are just not- Didn't we, I have a note from last week that there were some people like that, some like higher level people that were trying to get in, but that were not, we were turned away. Yes, that's right. So it seems like maybe there are some that are that are affected. Um, they were not charmed though. They okay, were, they, they were, were just willingly apparently. Yeah. Gotcha. But if they're getting, if they're not being allowed to be let in, then obviously either Mia Lassa or more likely, in my guess, the manager realizes that anyone at a higher level would be a threat. So. So do you want to go with the idea of trying to get one of these people charmed by her in the smear campaign, like Fitz said? <laughs> uh, 
If we could think seems... of any singular way to track this mysterious manager, yeah. that would be amazing. I wouldn't, that would be like ideal, but that seems so difficult. But I do think that that would be like our best bet. Yeah. <laughs> because like, 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 like the spirit, the voice in the sky said, if it was just like one most powerful person, they would just get a dispel and then probably just move mm -hmm. on. That doesn't guarantee that they're going to just stop. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Unless no. we got like a whole group of them. Is there like a, like a really rich quintuplet that we can just <laughs> sacrifice? No? No. Okay. And I'm new here, so I don't know, but. <laughs> My context, I don't think would know people like that. I mean. No. Maybe the music scene would know like where the fancy Richie bars are and like could maybe get some of those people to check out Mia Lassa. She's a new hot thing. Like come check her out. But I also feel just a little queasy. It's a little scheming. Just a little morally upset. Yeah, I'm or, not big on uh, Nora points at her horns like <laughs> <laughs> just because you have horns means you can just do whatever you want. Like it's some sort of excuse. I know that's not true. I know it. I so Nora, uh, Nora, as you're as you're talking about the manager and talking about like the higher end establishments, it occurs to you that there's two communications that need to happen, right? The manager needs to communicate to the venues, and then the manager needs to communicate with Mia Lassa. Or not mm -hmm. that smart that's what mm -hmm. you got in the sky. <laughs> sky voice thank you i totally said all this to you all. <laughs> I, mean, Nora, I mean she Thanks, knows. Nora. it's like Nora. you gotta make sure your manager needs to be like do this stuff right genius nora genius I am. You're a you are. I'm so good at this music so, stuff. You are. Yeah, it's a so smart if that's idea. the case, can we go talk to some of the venues and see who they Absolutely. Talk I've just to? been assuming that Milasa was like and the band members were doing it, like her troopies were doing it. But yeah, that makes way more sense. Yes. No, so I think she I think she told you or you guys somehow know that, that she does not book her venues. Yeah, she she yeah. she told uh Nora in uh, in That's that right. conversation last time that, that the manager booked the venues for her yeah yeah and then we know from the band members that she just tells them by like carrier pigeon yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah harry potter harry potter letter under the door cool so which one um, do we want to talk to first i mean there's you can talk to all of them if you wanted to yeah get more information so but like or what's the most recent one? Work our way back. The what most recent one, maybe that one's bigger. It had a lot of people that night. He might not remember. Remember, Mia Lassa was not the only person playing that night. So that right, night. she wasn't yeah. the main act. Right, she was just kind of. True. I was kind of thinking, maybe the one that we caused the big scene at the first one, because that's a night to remember. Yeah. With all the fire alarms and Mia Lassa, like maybe he had to apologize to the manager like after that, you know, like I'm so sorry that my fire alarms and sprinklers just started going off on your artist sure. that yeah. seems like a good place yeah. to start plus if but we're if flashing we're... around official stuff it makes more sense to be asked like we won't have to explain why we're investigating the same way we might if we're showing up at a venue where nothing weird to them happened well i'm not sure why a cop would investigate or detectives would investigate a sprinkler system going off i like the energy <laughs> i'm into it yes <laughs> Okay, we're, so we're the fire ask, extinguisher yeah. uh, we're here for safety. We're safety inspectors. <laughs> So you're talking about the Nash Jazz Club that you guys uh, made a big mess at? Yeah, 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 yeah the big mess. The staff there didn't realize you made that mess, right? No, no, because we did that, that via we did that via okay, yeah. Mage Hand and Magic and oh, such. That's the wrong thing. That's the thing. And I guess the awakened people would like know it was Magic, probably. But then... probably. No, but were there any awakened people working there? Like... Oh, yeah, but they, they were, were all charmed. Okay, no. okay, I wasn't sure about the staff. Um, well, the staff are all normal vanilla. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah, we could go ask them. How, so what's the plan okay. to reach out to them? I mean, do we want to email them or do we want to just go? What is normally, what would Nora know that's like yeah, the Nora, normal way to ask? Uh, yeah, Nora, <laughs> you, you're pretty sure that in-person is going to be the best bet. 
um, because also that you guys can bring your particular skills to bear a lot more effectively. Okay. Set up a tie. Skills holds up zip ties. Yeah. No, you don't need to tie time. up them. Your we favorite don't need to tie anybody up. Always, we'll bring them. It is always better to be prepared than to be unprepared. Never know. Okay, so you guys gonna head to the jazz club? Or you yes. Gonna... Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, um, so you head to the Nash Jazz Club. Uh, yeah, you guys remember this scene. Um, it's a you know, large building. Um, and uh, you go presumably like early, early evening when the doors open. Um, and uh, there's not really a line tonight. Um, there's a door guy there. Um, walk up, he you know, says, hey, cover, $10 cover. Oh yeah, I guess it's out of our own pocket this time. <laughs> but for the greater good, I will pay ten dollars. I don't have ten dollars. Wait. <laughs> yes, you do. I have to, oh yeah, we have money. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys all made fifty bucks off Thank that. Job. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. So, question on money because um, I know I put a whole bunch of stuff in my credit card, so technically I have like negative money, but, like. <laughs> Do I just have none? Like, does that mean well, that I can't have once cash? Your, once, or your what I feel comes, once your bill comes due, then it'll be come due between you and the credit card company. Okay, but but could I have like pulled cash at some point, expecting? Uh... Oh, we got. Oh. I'm just thinking if there's if there's like that's what I'm asking. It's like my negative mean I'm not allowed to have cash, or can I? Oh have no, no, yeah, the, the fifty the fifty that you have from the job you still have. Okay, cool. Yeah, so you can put that in parentheses or something, some way to de designate it separately. Yeah, I also don't know about Fitz's money situation. I've just been going off of BS. She has fifty dollars in her pocket right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys all all pay the cover head on in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. So yeah, same setup you recognized before. There's a bar on the left, bar on the right. Um, there's servers kind of moving around. Well, we'll have to talk to whoever manages this place. The servers probably don't know. Uh, Nora, and I'm just gonna look at her. <laughs> um, me, Mary Catherine, has no idea who you would ask. <laughs> oh, I would like, I, you're just a talker. I say, like, go ask the, um, oh, you want me to, like, to talk to them? Oh, okay. yeah, 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 you're the okay. talker, you're the talker. <laughs> you, this is your, you could ask I about have the gun and the zip ties, that's what you I could ask about to music to. booking. <laughs> I'm doing the hand gesture. I'm not actually holding a gun in this club right now. Okay, good. <laughs> I am brandishing the zip ties, however. Oh my God. <laughs> in the back. Malachi's okay, like, put those down, put those down. Okay, I'm going to hold them out even longer just to spite this 10 year old. <laughs> hmm. Who at the. Slowly put them in the back. Um, I guess who at the bar or like server whatever seems not busy at the time right yeah, now. yeah there's there's one of the bars there's they're just like chit chat cool i'll um, walk up to the bar okay um uh, yeah as you approach you hear the bartenders uh are talking um about uh the all valley women's gymnastics meet where there was the riot they're like oh my god yeah you saw that right um, and apparently they're, they're talking like they were there and it's like, oh my God, that was crazy. You remember that? And so they're just like sharing the story of, of when they were there. This is where your, uh, your parents disappeared in the original oh. team. Uh, oh, did y'all, um, I heard about that. That happened a couple, well, a little while ago. Were y'all at that crazy thing? Oh my God, we're, yeah, right? It was nuts, like a riot at a gymnast meet. Yeah, Chester and I were totally there. I'm Tom, uh, this is Chester, and yeah, we were in the top, uh, you know, flights, um, and like this dude broke in. He had like a bunch of Hell's Angels guys with him, um, and all hell broke loose. Um, four people like jumped out of the crowd to like confront him or something. And he produced this skull in his hands, and it had like these glowing teeth. And three of the people just vanished. 
And uh, then the other one who didn't vanish, he like fell through a trap door or something. Uh, and then people started screaming and running. We got the hell out of there. Oh my God, a skull? Like Hell's Angels people? That's right. crazy. What? Like gym meat. I like a, a girl's gym meat. Like, that's absurd. Like, so you know what happened after that? Like everybody just scattered out of there, then those people just disappeared? Yeah, I mean, I, like we ran, you know, everyone, everyone just ran. I didn't stick around to see what was going on. Like the Hells Angels guys are like grabbing people and beating them up, and like I didn't want that to happen to me, so we took off. Wow, um, that's crazy. Well, um, I was hoping, um, I'm interested in like trying to get a booking here at Jules' place. So I was hoping I could talk to whoever. Um, I would do all if you know if you could grab whoever I need to talk to about that. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'll call Jeremy. He's in back. Um, about five minutes later, a uh, middling height uh, guy with long blonde hair, ponytail, um, conservative, kind of clean line, black jacket, um, comes out from behind the stage area and uh, heads your direction. And he kind of scopes the situation out pretty quickly, figures out. Uh, what the deal is and walks up to you and says, uh, Miss, I heard um, you were looking uh, for maybe booking with us. I'm, I'm Jeremy. He extends his hand. Hey, I'm Nora. I extend my hand. Shake it. Okay. Um, and okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, what can I do for you? Yeah, I was um, interested in uh, just seeing like prices, all that kind of stuff, availability, just kind of a quick rundown, how you typically, you know, book anything here. Yeah, are you a manager or an artist or? Um, I am my own artist, but I'm kind of like, I know it's a little unusual, but I'm kind of like just kind of getting the feelers out. Oh, sure, just trying to figure things out. Um, yeah, why don't you come on back, we'll have to sit down. Sure thing. He turns around and waves you over. Um, okay, he takes you to a little back office, sits down on the other side of the desk, hands you uh, like an information brochure, you know, has their fee structure and uh, their equipment um, set up, uh, you know, all the details on the sound system, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, um, thank you for this. And also, I was like, um, heard a while ago that y'all had Via Lhasa one night, so that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, me, I can uh, let's see, he has, he has a calendar actually, he looks over, he's like, oh yeah, yeah, sure, that was a few, like a week or so ago. Um, yeah, how was, um, do you remember how her show, did she have a big turnout? She's been, I saw her like a night ago, and she had like this huge turnout, so I was curious. If, yeah, uh, I think, I think it was, it was fine, I don't remember, uh, you know, I, I got the numbers here somewhere, uh, but that night was also a mess. Uh, like the final arm got pulled, and there's this big fracas, and eh, big mess. Oh my gosh! Someone pulled the fire alarm. How? Yeah, that's so silly. I can't believe someone would do that. Give me a deception check. <laughs> I rolled a natural twenty, and oh. what is my deception? So that's like a twenty-six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you can tell whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to think here. Wait a minute. What am I trying to get out of this? <laughs> you want to know? We're trying. We want to find out Mia Loss's manager. How would you even do that? So wait, you said er well, earlier, Eric, that like the managers are the ones that book for their artists, right? Right. You're the managers at a venue. Yeah. So supposedly this man has talked to whoever Mia Loss's manager is in some way. Yeah, so like he was the, that manager is who booked Mia Loss's gig here. And assuming Jeremy's the only person who books things for this company, he is talked to company, jazz club. He's the only one who's talked to this mysterious manager person. So yeah. you just gotta ask yeah, him. So maybe, yeah, you just gotta ask him, like maybe you're wanting to get on with that manager or something, who knows? Yeah, and that's what I'm trying to think of too with like artists, would they like because they're looking for managers and stuff, right? Right. But then like 
would they go to a venue to ask? Like, I don't know what's like a normal thing. It's a little bit weird, but you can, I mean, Nora, Nora can navigate it even if you, Mary Catherine, cannot. Okay, cool, because I have no clue. <laughs> that's what spell checks represent is, you know, your character figuring things out. Cool. All right. <laughs> Back in character here. Um, oh, yeah, they have fire. Um, yeah, that's curious too. So, what do y'all have? Who do you have tonight, though? Was just kind of looks over at the calendar. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a jazz trio. Um, yeah, with me and Lassa, so like I am kind of an upcoming artist. So I was wondering if, um, yeah, I was, I really love the stuff that she plays and all the different venues she's been at. So I was curious um, if you had the contact information for her manager and see if I could get on board. All right, give me a persuasion. Which text did I just use? Also, I don't know if you still have inspiration, but if you do, keep that in mind. Yeah, do I? <laughs> I don't think I've ever used it because I never know what it is. Uh, well, I rolled like a 16 plus 6, so that was basically Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, he uh, he, he has, like, degree a, has, to be good he has like, a portfolio right? of business cards that he keeps, and so he like draws one out uh, and hands it to you. Um, um, and it has a very simple card. Um, it says, Mr. Iteria Smith, um, representing Mielasa and uh, gives a phone number um, that's a phone number uh, not from the valley. It's a, a prefix that you don't recognize. Hmm. But it is like a US number, right? Yeah, it's US. Uh, he he kind of turns around, uh, makes a copy of the card, and hands you the copy. Here you go. Good luck. All right. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, and thank you for this brochure. I really appreciate it. Yeah, great. Hopefully, we'll see you. All right. Thanks walk up and leave <laughs> great all right what shenanigans have you guys been getting up to in the front yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're just just it. We were, yeah we just started to wonder if she kicked down the door or something um, so we're, we're debating whether or not you had been kidnapped yeah <laughs> it's gone like five minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, hey. so i'm like five minutes you know probably still good another five minutes mm, i don't start I'm to be pretty sure. and stuff I'm pretty sure that when we found Reese, that only took five minutes. Is all I'm gonna say. That's true. That's a bad thing. Yeah, kidnappings do happen pretty quickly. So I appreciate the. You know how <laughs> easy it is for someone to get yeah, You guys know how easy it is to kidnap <laughs> someone. Really, it's actually kind of disappointing. It should have been way harder. Plus, <laughs> there's a lot lacking in security protocols just everywhere. Okay, uh, so Nora comes uh, back out with the uh, brochure in her hand. Hey guys, guys, I got I got his business card. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> Jinx. You owe me a coke. Do either of you have money? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like yeah? kind of. I have a job. Yeah. I'm a functioning a adult member of society. I got a job. I have credit I cards. Do. I've been being paid the past three years somehow. <laughs> How am I gonna pay? The I'm military gonna... paid me. I got How money. How am I gonna cook food for Malachi this week? I know you got money. We have food. We have money. I mean, we legitimately like get money. I don't know. <laughs> right, we're we got paid at the end of that last job. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, Which this time probably, we're not getting paid for this job. Just, we're not. We should probably do this before, like pretty soon, so that we can get to like hopefully another real job that we get paid for. You know, this is leading me to an idea. If we can't find jobs, we start kidnapping people, get fired. <laughs> this sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> no fits. <laughs> Don't say that this... out loud either. Let, let's just go. Like the the bar. Bar. <laughs> Drinking our water is the younger right. bother to buy a real drink at this bar this whole time. We're just like, chilling Tom, out. Tom and Chester are like kind of eyeing you guys and stands at this point. Yeah, Malachi is like but trying to like hide the description for the police for later. <laughs> the more the more Fitz says about that, the more Malachi is like trying to hide under the bar. No, I talk in <laughs> real like life. Sink. This is how I would say things. I are <laughs> minus two charisma. Yep. I thought it was good. minus one, so I'm right up there with you. <laughs> Five. 
I mean, I think we're. All I have no boat. filter. <laughs> I just say the word. My Christmas <laughs> eighteen, so I am like charmer over here compared to y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's why you're talking. Like yeah, that's why I got the business talk. card. <laughs> so, okay, uh, are we just? So are you guys gonna leave the club? Yeah. Are we gonna stay here and and watch the show, or we? Oh, I mean, oh I we're gonna go. cover. <laughs> And we yeah, paid, we paid for the cover. Blocks. We could listen to the music. Yeah, but that's true. I mean, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I want to listen to a jazz trio. I don't know always like jazz music. Uh, listen to the wind today, today, guys. We got good info. We should okay. celebrate. Okay. Yeah, with well, some tonic waters. <laughs> yeah, <I'm gonna laughs> drinks, but... while we watch the show, I'm gonna be that that person. I'm gonna like, can I see the business card? Yeah. I'm gonna pull out my phone. I'm not gonna call them, but I am just gonna Google the number and see if anything pops up. I show um, it to you, but I don't give it to you. Okay, we are a team, but all right. <laughs> I was about to say, if we want backups, might it be a good idea I'm for us to take ourselves take a, snap picture. a picture. Yeah, I was like, you can take a picture. I'm worried about one of us losing it. <laughs> I'm gonna take a snapshot of that. It's oh, uh, wait, we code is uh, a which here. is West LA. Oh, huh, West, West LA. LA. It's 305 oh. area code. West does it seem to be attached to our particular business or like when I google it does a business pop up oh no it's like a personal number I could you there are like the websites where you plug in a number or I could give this number to Gary is that his name I, know, I was wondering Gary and he can see what's up with it so it's like a also burner not that or something hard to find and we there. could also call it yeah, we could also call it. That's another option we could do. These are all real options. <laughs> prank, start prank calling them. I do want to take a selfie, though, while we're all out. Gonna... I'm going to make sure the stage is in the back. Nice. Okay, smile. Three, two, one. Click. Okay, well, that's good. That's good. good right, guys, a little you guys enjoy, enjoy the show. Um, do, do you, Nora, do you tell them about what, uh, what Tom and Jester said about the gym meet? I do. Okay. I, um, yeah, I, I would tell everyone, so. Like, okay. Oh, yeah, I guess I would tell, like, Fitz and Malachi, really, because Carol doesn't know anything, just, Carol doesn't know anything about that. told me, like, what happened in your well, parents, like, do I know missing? that you don't have, like, your parents went missing, like. Yeah, I don't think you have much of their story. You just yeah. were these kids and fits and it, yeah, it seems like a little bit of mess. And I figure something happened, just not that recent. Yeah, yeah. so, oh, so by the way, two of those four people were our bosses and coincidentally, their parents, just like. Oh, wow. It seems like the, the reason why we don't know the paperwork, that, that's why we don't know the paperwork. Yeah, things, a lot of things are suddenly clicking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know anything about parenting, so I just sort of give yeah. Malachi some like broccoli every once in a while if and assume he's okay. Help, <laughs> just any of that, just like call me anytime. Like, I mean, I figure like, anyways, you know, that's out there, but just uh, like another general, like, if you need help, call me. We need an adult. Okay. <laughs> Keep that in mind. I'm getting creative with the cooking now. Like, we're I'm going to like fine. Asian. <laughs> I only ate one one whole pack of Oreos last week. I mean, same kid. <laughs> I told you we were going to share those. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay so, um, so you guys, you guys enjoy, you guys enjoy the show. Um, head home. It goes, you know, moderately late, so uh, there's probably not anything more to be done that day. Um, and then next day it comes along. Do we want to call this guy, or are we going to try to be sneaky before we try to talk to him? Um, it depends on how malicious we think he is. If he's just a normal manager and this isn't a job, there can't be any. I mean, he might be confused. No, I mean, it was a business card. So, I mean, we could just call him and see what he says. I mean, one of us can pretend to be a potential client or something, unless we presume that he's super malicious, and then, then we might have to talk. <laughs> uh Malachi is going to try and research the guy by his name rather than yeah. like the phone number look up just to see if he can find any information on 
uh, yeah. on was it it Ariya Smith something? Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. I have somehow missed, I must have clocked out there in those three seconds of his name earlier because I didn't. I thought I was this first. Can I either do that or help him too? Because that feels like something to be up my alley with, like searching yeah. for me. So, I've so added, am... I would have searched that last night, but I just clocked out for three total seconds. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can find any information about his by searching his name. Am I doing my own check or helping with Oh, what, am, check I, what am I rolling? I missed that. Ah, oh, well, my investigation is pretty good. Okay, I was say, I've got good news. Oh, uh, wow, okay. Uh, I rolled a nat 20, so that's a 26. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I am, okay, I am uh, proficient in investigation and that's my primary skill too. <laughs> um, you, uh, you dig into the internet pretty thoroughly uh, that morning and um, dig up some information. So you dig up um, a news report and a um, obituary notice. So the obituary is of this this person, Itariah Smith. Um, it says, um, you know, beloved uh, husband and father um, died suddenly. Um, this was about four years ago. Um, so, um, so that's what the obituary says, and this was in the. Um, it's not. It's not the LA Times, but it would be. A, it would be a small paper, um, like the, one of the Santa Monica presses. Um, and then the news article um, is even older than that. It's like um, like seven years um ago that it's talking about like a tech startup um that was founded by this guy uh Itariah smith um and two other um guys um reginald yeshir and omar killian um that founded this tech startup in uh, Sacramento era in, in Santa Monica um, that was looking at um, like improved communication technology. It's not very specific. Hmm. So it seemed like this, this guy was like living his life uh, in LA and then he died. Hmm. Doesn't say of what, just suddenly. Exactly. Okay. So, so uh, number of a maybe before we call him, we figure out if he's alive, because I think he's dead. Well, either he's not dead and he faked his death, or this is somebody else using his identity for whatever reason of a dead man. But either way, I mean, How's someone has got to be on the other end of that number. Right. How'd the tech startup go? It is. It That's what I was about to ask. Is like, did, did that tech fail? startup? succeed or did it fail <laughs> um it never got listed um like okay. never had an ipo or anything like that so you're guessing that um it, it did it did not take off but you don't find any um like you don't find any archive web um information okay. about it like it didn't seem to have its own website or at least not one that was archived um so it seems like it just it came up there was this uh press release about it and then it seems like it didn't go anywhere Okay. Okay. What about his partners, Omar Killian and other that I missed? <laughs> yeah, I missed the other name. There's Reginald uh, something. Reginald. Yeah. Are they still? What happens when we pull up their name? Um, yeah, they. It looks like they're um, like techies. Like you got some uh, um, like college graduation information from them. Like they graduated from UCLA um, and then went into grad school at MIT. Um, there are articles about, you know, up and coming, you know, very bright, et cetera. There's this article about uh, the company, the tech company. Um, and then a couple of years later, there are more articles about other tech companies and technology that they're involved with. Um, so it seems like they continue to do their tech stuff. Interesting, interesting. 
So they're probably, if they're still living their life and not really focusing around here and not in this town, it's probably not them. They're probably not involved, so to speak. So. I don't suppose we found any pictures of this guy, only news articles, right? Right, yeah, no, no pictures. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry. In the, in the news article, there is a picture of the three of them. Are they all, do they all appear to be normal humans? <laughs> um, it doesn't, it doesn't really translate through, through image media very well. Unfortunately, so gotcha. Harry Potter. Um, so yeah, <laughs> it, they do seem to just be vanilla people. Um, three guys. Um, Itaraya is maybe a little bit older than the other two. He was maybe in his 30s at the time the picture was taken. The other two were in their 20s. Okay. So, either like I guess this guy is yeah he's an identity, but it seems suspicious either way. This guy definitely yeah. seems to be trying to hide something, right? Okay. Or he's a vampire. So at the very least, I think we can rule out this Iteria Smith just being a totally normal manager who somehow ended up with whatever Mia Lop is <laughs> as a client, right? But anywho, this number leads to someone and leads to the person we're looking for, regardless of if it's Idar. That's a hard one, is it? It already. It already. Smith, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Smith. <laughs> Mr. Smith. That's that's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna be able to say it again. It already. It Smith. Uh, regardless, of, regardless of whether or not it is actually him or if it's somebody taking on his identity, this number is the person we are looking for. Unless they've been using a burner phone and they just replaced their. I'm going down an avenue. I need to not. So we're gonna. <laughs> no, I'm going down that alley. Too. Yeah. <laughs> Which, if this doesn't go anywhere, we hit the next place. Right. Get the same information. If the numbers don't match, then we know that he's using burner phones. Mm -hmm. So we can cross that bridge when we get to it. Sounds great. Cool. So. Do you want me to call? We want to call. Sure. What are we gonna ask him? <laughs> Just. Well, we don't have to be all. We're an investigative agency. We want to know. Just talk to him to see cursory information. Well, I mean, Nor usually when you call somebody, you call them for a reason. I yeah. mean, I could be saying I'm looking for a manager. <laughs> yeah, that's that you've already planted those seeds, so you don't even yeah. be easy to carry okay, on. Okay, so, so I guess uh, Nora can call and ask about having him book gigs. Okay, what phone are you going to use, Nora? That's a good question. What name should I tell this guy to? You have a stage name. Or could you make a new one up right now? I'm terrible at coming up with names. <laughs> <laughs> You've already introduced yourself as Nora to the other person, right? So, I mean. Yeah. That to you. That's just a random manager, though. Like, What's Nora backwards? Uh... Heron. Uh, <laughs> Haran. That's kind of cute, actually. That's kind of cute. cute. Not super good for I mean, like concealing the identity the unless you discreet. change the spelling to Heron. <laughs> Karen. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I was like, Heron, no. like the bird. Like, yeah, you're almost at what's the backwards name. But, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> Hi, I'm Karen, and I'd like to talk to the manager. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys like, talk the BIs very long. <laughs> uh, I can do Karen, I guess. Bird squad, bird squad. Bird squad. Okay, and then whose phone are you using? Um, do I just use the Pi Square phone? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. All right. Personal phone. If you're uncomfortable using your phone, I don't mind you using my phone. I will use. Is this 2015? This existed yeah. back then. <laughs> Google Voice. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna try and there mask your number with a fake number. <laughs> there you go. Totally, totally Technology is great. Um, great. Give me a uh, intelligence check, and if you have, you don't have computer tools, so it's me intelligence check. Oh no, okay. Let's say I've got, I don't know if I've, I, I think I've kind of got tech. Is there any way that like I could be helping her with this to facilitate that? Because I've got, 
something that I would think kind of translates to like tech yeah. skills. Do you have computer use? I have, so um, I don't know if I brought this up or not previously. I have as my background, the researcher, like not skill, but like um, background feature. Yeah, background feature, basically saying if I don't know information or lore or something, I can find it somewhere. And my okay. idea of this is setting being that like that translates to she's really good at looking stuff up online, Facebook stock and that kind of stuff. Oh yeah. Um, would that right. translate to computer skills? Because I've envisioned she uses computers a lot. Right. Yeah, I'd say that, that would be more research and this is more application okay. espionage. Okay, cool. I rolled a 17. Okay, uh, that's fine. It's not hard to figure out how to do this. Um, okay, great. You call you call the number um, after a couple of rings. Um, picks up. Hello. Hey, is this Mr. Smith? It is. Hey, my name's Aaron, and I was trying to. Um, I'm a new talent in town, so I was looking out for. I was looking for a manager. I am not taking any more clients. Okay. Um, do you um, have any, do, do, do you have any managers that you would recommend or that you would know of? No, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you have, um, do you know when you might be open up to new talents anytime soon? Not in the near future. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Goodbye. Quick. <laughs> oh, that was that fast. Was, oh, that fast. was ch chilly and cold. He was not yeah. very talkative. Mm. He did not seem. Um, okay. Yeah. Do you relay everything he said? Yeah, I'll just relay everything he said. Cool. Even like his weird like hesitation to answer the phone, that kind of thing. Okay. We That's... know the number works and we know what we've made identity. Yeah. We know. Sorry, yeah. That is Shoot. just go away. Why? It's strange. Like that's definitely leading to something malicious. A manager only gets money from their clients. Like they don't make a salary. They get a percentage of their clients, you know. I mean, uh, I mean you could just be manager. too busy. Yeah. Right, but with his clientele being just Mielasa, he's probably oh, we, we uh, like that. levels know? of Mielasa, not just Mielasa, like just Mielasa level of client, like anywhere. Well, I mean, we, do we know that even? I mean, he's that's how managers typically work. <laughs> well, yeah, but yeah, we don't know if yeah. And he could have bigger talent that he manages. We just don't know about it. And at this point, we didn't even know he existed until last night. <laughs> he definitely sounds sketchy, regardless of whether he's that, only managing the officer or if there's other involved. I mean, hard to say from that, but the way he answered you so shortly, I mean, if he's someone who's working with people and working with coordinating stuff for those people with other people, you'd expect someone with a little bit better people skills. Mm-hmm. So, All right. Well, I mean, where do we, we want to go ahead? Do we ask him why he's not dead? <laughs> Call again, another number, and be direct. Get fits on the job and be content. <laughs> 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 Something tells me that'll just get you hung up on, but. We just, we call him, we just start reading the obituary over the phone, no preamble, nothing. <laughs> Super creepy. I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> I mean, that... it's strange to me that, I don't know, both ways to think about it, it's so strange that he's using this name. Right. Must and he's using a business card. Mm -hmm. Anyone could just Google him like we did and find out that he's dead. Yeah, that is <laughs> really strange to me. Um, so oh, Malachi, to be clear, Malachi succeeded where nobody else can. Like if any of you three tried replicating the search that Malachi did this morning, you probably would not 
have found that. So this is oh, okay. Yeah, okay, I mean, okay. he's okay. Malachi yeah. doing some sleuthing. I mean, and this is like what he does. So he gotcha. left out. So this wasn't the first yeah, Google search for. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. not to say that you, that other people in the world also couldn't luck out, but anyone just googling but this. It's a death certificate. Fine. So he. Okay. Well, I mean, just fits. I know this might be an th avenue you may not think about, but I. Uh, what if he's? What if he is, Itariah Smith, and he did die. Okay, they, that was one of people our two come back from the dead. Up. That was one of our two options. I don't understand why you're talking to me like that, but he did, what if it, but like, what if he's not impersonating anybody? Yeah, that's one of the two options we said. Yeah, I think oh. there's a good chance it is, is him. Point, he's or just is undead. Him something happened. Yeah, that's my guess. Should I explain why he's working with uh, Mia Lassa? But. So is someone so is someone gonna call him up and read him his obituary or <laughs> that, seems very poor. that seems very forward. <laughs> yeah, I think you would just hang up. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just gonna hang up on you if you do that. I yeah, wonder. But you know, scare him a bit. One of those right. vague threats like we gave me a lot of I don't know someone on his trail, but so out of the three places that we've been to so far tracking Milasa, all the, excuse me, all the owners have been, all the managers and all the employees have been Four. not awakened, right? No, because you had oh. Stone Cove was the first place. Right, no, I'm not including yeah. Stone Cove in that oh. because I'm about to bring up Stone Cove in another, in a, in a point. But like the right. other three, right. they're, they're all like vanilla people. Correct. Right, so that means Stone Cove, with, like, what's his name? I have it. Hold on, Vampire Boy. Oh yeah. So that was Stove Cove. That was Stove Cove. Yeah, I know. That was him. Yeah. Oh, that's his name. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Vampire no, that, yeah. Boy. I forgot that that was his name too. <laughs> oh yeah. But, it's like, yeah, yeah. but it's, I understand that that's him. But what is his name? Yes, all the same. But yes, yeah, so Stone Cove. Um. Um. Uh, Ray's <laughs> Mansion is the name of the place. And stuff. Okay. Yes. But like, anyways. So he, being being the only one that we know of thus far because Milas has might have been doing this for a while now um or she has we know that anyways um he knows like if he's some sort of he knows person what? or awakened like he would know right well, like, oh he, i see what you're saying yeah yeah because you can't don't you know he's a vampire yeah we know yeah. he's a vampire Carol wasn't yeah. there, but Terry oh, hey, Carol, a vampire. You know vampires. <laughs> so, like, Stone Cove would know, yeah, okay. is what I'm saying. Like, because he uh, know what about if... Idariah Smith. Uh, so he would have had to meet up with Idariah Smith. And so, so might have we... more than vanilla human beings would know about this mis mysterious man. I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, I don't so know if he ever would have, like, met him in person, but, I mean, he... Yeah, because he's all the way, the, he had an L.A. number, didn't you say? Yeah, but I have, have a number called... from Missouri, and so and here I am in Arizona. <laughs> so he, he might be here, but he might have just called him. Do we want to go back and talk to that guy? He was creepy. I was like, this guy's creepy, too, so, you know. I mean, like, I what are the well, creepy not, people pick up from each other? <laughs> I'm not letting him drink my blood. Okay. Oh yeah, Carol, by the way, last <laughs> time we were there, just so you're not weirded out or flipped out, he was like, he, we have to pay for this information. And last time it was just like a little slurp, just a little, just like real good, just a quick little nip. Just from like one it, of It was a couple minutes. It took a few minutes. Yeah, but I mean, like- From what I know of vampires, that doesn't time, sound great. Long time, small amount of blood. Like you don't hear, it's just like slight, less woozy than donating blood. Does it have to be fresh blood, or can we rob a blood bank first? I have a feeling that he has, um, well, he drank my blood, so I can't say high taste. But... <laughs> I'm sure you got great blood, Fitz. Oh, thanks, Carol. Thank you. Carol. That's very kind of you. I have been self-conscious about that recently. <laughs> so that really, that really means the world to me right now. Um, so do we want to go talk to him? I'm saying that, like, out of he... anybody to talk to, he might have 
out of everybody that we currently know, he might be the one with the most information. Do we have to go talk to him? Oh, we could probably find some other avenue if we wish to, but that is an idea that I have in the brain. I like it. Seems like the most concrete lead we've got so far. Yeah, we can talk to him. What do we want to ask him? Does say just in, about just... him? I mean, he knows we're an investigative agency, so he knows we're on this case. He knows we're looking up Mia Lassa. So we'll just be like, do we just go hey, barge into hey. its office again? I mean, we'll knock. We could call him ahead if we want to, but we were last time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of what you do. You go up to businesses. That's kind of how the, the, the job works. <laughs> you go knock, 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 and then... I mean, last time we just kind of, like, ran into his office and started interrogating him without even telling him our name. Yeah, that's because that was our first time, you know. A little <laughs> more experience. <laughs> We're a little more experienced this time. Now we don't have to do that again because he knows us, except for Carol, and I'm pretty sure I'll spoil it. <laughs> Someone will say her name. Okay, sure. Let's I mean, if do you that. don't want to go, you don't gotta go. You can just stay here. Yeah. No, I, I want to. I want to know. I know we've been just... dragging. We've been dragging the kid to a lot of bars. So are we dragging the <laughs> Vampire Bar too? I went last time. Did you go last time? Great. I want to again, go. Nora. Right. If you ever need help, just call me. Like help <laughs> and advice. <laughs> Just remember that we can't do any magic things there. Yeah. He, he, Which yeah, means the Mia Lassa? How did that work for her? In there. Oh, I just thought about that. That's a good point. I'm I guess he lets her do it. Out, because like before we didn't make the connection that she was doing magic. Now we know she um. is. Out of character, just going back to my thoughts. My understanding of just again listening and being more out of character. Um, so take this as you will. If you want to think you interpreted it differently, um, or think you would have, or you did. Um, anyways, preamble aside. Um, I was under the impression since Reese disappeared right after that, but that's presumably where she got enchanted, and therefore, yeah, mm -hmm. sure, she did magic there. I just don't know why. That I'm, is where she got it. Wanted. So whether Stove Cove realized that they were doing magic, I don't know. Because that's the Rave Mansion, right? right. That's, where she was, that's where she was that happened to her. Right. Yep. So that is weird. I mean, that is where it went down for her. That's where she got spilled. But how come Mia lost his magic work? Well, did uh, did Stove Cove, um, didn't he, wasn't he aware of it, though? Isn't that what we determined? I don't remember mm, what he you He said the Awakened people really liked her. Yeah. Which oh, means he could have been hiding something from us. Like he might know and not care. <laughs> but like, also saying like the manager. That yeah, that's the vampire. That's the vampire. Yes, yeah. No, 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 no. But what if he was um, the manager? Oh, no. I thought you meant manager. <laughs> <laughs> manager. I was like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> I was like, yep. He's all the managers. Every manager. Uh, They're all him. Um. Unless he's getting some kind of cut into this and is just letting her use her magic. Maybe he just thinks it's a fun show. I mean, it definitely draws a crowd, and that's what he's in the business of. Yeah. I don't think I mean, he cares too much about morals, as long as he's having fun. Yeah. I mean, the DJ is a zombie, so... DJ Brains! With I... <laughs> By the way, there's a DJ zombie, and his name's DJ Brains. Well, his finger fell off. <laughs> yeah, it did happen. I'm imagining, like, we're having these conversations, and fits like, Nora and Sam, who lived this life since they were born, and Fitz will just look up, see Kyogo, and, like, it'd be like, so, by the way, this is... I'm, I'm loving, I'm loving that mental picture, and she's like, might as well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Believe anything at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, okay, you know, you guys, might uh, as well. Wait for, wait for Nightfall, head off to Stoko's Rain Mansion, um, get there, there's not too many cars in the parking lot. There's not a line um, at this point. There's the same uh, bouncer guys you guys encountered before. Um, head up to them. What do you say? We hold up our badge again, our little thing, and be like, we're here for a follow-up interview with uh, Mr. Stone Cove from the Pi Squared Investigative Agency. Is that it? Is that a tautology? Is pi squared including the words investigative agency? <laughs> I don't remember what pi squared is for. Paranormal. Uh, 
<laughs> yes, investigator shoot. is the, okay. the second. Okay, shoot. Yep, I did it. To it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Um, one of the guys holds up his hand, goes over, and uh, makes a phone call. Comes back. Do I have it, a badge yet? Kind of points his, one, points his thumb in. Like you go. Paper one, like you get your license. <laughs> Which, uh... He waved us in, so we're. Wait, okay. We'll badge. We'll print your one when we get up. <laughs> okay, um, so you guys know where to go up the stairs, past the employees only rope. Um, and then it's the, well, if he's in the same place, it's the first door on the left. All right. Okay. Um, you open the door um, again. Um, oh, yeah. When, as soon as you walked in the Rave Mansion, you were just assaulted by this wall of sound and can barely talk to each other. Make it up to his office. Open the door. Um, close it. The music cuts off immediately. Again, the whole far wall is this single pane of glass. Um, his desk is on the right. On the left, there are a few uh, comfy uh, chairs and couches and lounges. Um, and he's just sitting there lounging, apparently waiting for you. Oh, hello, lovelies. Hey. Oh, beautiful to see you again. Yeah, how are you doing? It's a nice band you got tonight. Come in and have a seat. Oh, thank you, darling. It's so nice to hear good compliments. Well, go have a seat. What can Stove Co. do for you? And who's this new, nice, wonderful lady? Hi, Carol, new hire. Carol, delightful. I'm Stove Co. Please feel free to always come. Happy to talk to you whenever I can. So what brings you to me today? Look over at Fitz. No, okay. We're so um, we're here investigating someone specific. What do you know about an Itariah Smith? So oh, God, I said it right that time. <laughs> oh yeah, he was uh, Milos's manager. He came in and booked her when uh, when DJ Brains was out sick. Um, I'm gonna pull up that art that article that not the whole article, but like specifically the picture. I'll zoom in on Itariah Smith's face in that picture that Malachi, I forgot Malachi's name, that's why I was stolen. Malachi found, and it'll show it to him. Is this, the, is this the guy? Is this him? Looks an awful lot like him, but he looks a little different too. Okay. okay did my part. Now, how does he look <laughs> a little different? Uh, he just seems a little older, had a little more life happen to him, I suppose. Hmm. Any death happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> well, he had a slow but strong heartbeat. Okay. What's a cat? What's a what's a good way to ask? I don't know the social faux pas on if someone's awakened or if they're just from the world below. <laughs> yeah. Would Fitz <laughs> care? Fitz would not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just ask him. Yeah, it. I would just ask him like that. Was he awakened or was he from the world before or was he just like a normal human? Fitz would not care for social faux pas. <laughs> oh no, love. He was absolutely one of us. But like, like specifically though? Well, he's what sort? He's a human, if you, that's what you're asking. Where's all this going, lovies? What, so what, what's your grief with the poor Mr. Smith? Wait, he's a human, but he is one, he's from the world below. He's, so he's an awakened human, yeah. He's awakened human. So what's your, what's your, uh, what's your issue with uh, Mr. Smith then? We know we're just like you said. You said last time you told him you were investigating something. Yeah, I mean he know. He told you, huh? Did you so we're him, like yeah. So we're still on the case. We're still doing our investigations of the case with that missing person we were talking. Reese, if you remember, we found her. We're still looking into it, into the circumstances oh. behind mm -hmm. this. 
Congratulations on finishing your first case. Thank you. Your help was most invaluable. Oh, um, love to hear it. But we're still looking into it a little bit more. Um, and we found this, his name, Idariah Smith, and we just wanted to make sure, we just wanted to clear his name before moving on to other suspects. If well, Bella, I'm more than happy to tell you lots more. You know the usual fee. <laughs> the usual <Ten>. fee. <laughs> what else do we, what else do we want to know? Though? Uh, so it, Malachi is just going to pipe up like, I found a thing that said Mr. Oh, yeah. Smith I, was yeah. dead like a long time ago, like a couple of years ago, dead. I'll zoom out now of the picture <laughs> reveal the whole article <laughs> <laughs> to support him. It doesn't surprise me too much. And like I said, I'm happy to tell you lots, lots more. Right, right. What, so the... what I have to say. How did you meet him? Or have you, you worked with him before? He came to me. So we're definitely gonna have to pay the fee. So who's it gonna be? <laughs> Last time he did three points of damage, just like as an update as to how much. That's a third of my health. I'll do it again. I don't care. But like, some, if somebody else to just have an yeah, itch, you know, just have an itch. Malachi like shrinks one, down yeah. in his seat. Yeah, no, no, not the kid. <laughs> not, not, not the kid, yeah. <laughs> push the no. kid forward. Here you go. Go for it. I guess so. No one else is jumping up on the. I mean, are, do you have enough blood? I'll take it. Your, I mean, like, I regenerated that. I regrew the blood. Yeah, the like. <laughs> Mentally thinking back to like my hematology class, how long I think I think you might need a little more time. But it's been like days. It's, it's been, been a, it's been days. a couple weeks actually. It's been a long time. Yeah, keep, I ate a cookie. You keep, you keep wavering next oh row, and it's like three or four days yeah. later. Yeah, fair. Okay, yeah, you probably got blood. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, he uh, reaches across and grabs your wrist and Very bites into it, and it's even <laughs> a cover like Malachi's eyes and ears. <laughs> you know, I saw, I, I saw like, it last time. The first time was like it was nice. It was like yeah, a little bit of tingling. Was it nice? <laughs> this time, it's actually like ooh. This I don't know what that means. Good. Oh, good. I'm getting addicted to drugs, everybody. <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm playing at it. Give it to time me. It hits the spot. Like, you feel really nice. Perfect. Uh, uh -oh. You uh, take four points of damage, and your maximum health is reduced by four. Oh, shit. <laughs> cool. How do I fix that on Dungeon Master? You didn't have enough blood fits. <laughs> I'm not a doctor. I feel fine. I feel great, actually. Yeah, you feel fine. Yeah, I feel you, good. You feel, actually, you do feel legitimately great. I feel great. Like, I'm ready to climb on top of this building right now. Yep. No. I can sit Probably like don't do that after giving blood. 50 people. Uh -huh. well, Just in quick yeah. succession. He licks the wound clean and smiles at you. You guys see his teeth are stained in blood. You see his fangs prominently displayed. How do I do this? <laughs> well, lovies, always... Pleasure doing business with you. Uh, this Idariah Smith fellow, now, you shouldn't go messing with this fellow because he's dangerous. He deals with the dead magic. And I think he would kill all of you. Oh, but do you know why? He's an evil fellow. He's got plans. He's got schemes. Are they his plans and schemes, or was he? Oh, another level. It's another. It's a whole ladder. <laughs> We're gonna climb. No, either eye is about as bad as it gets in the valley. Hmm. I would steer clear of the fellow and any of his machinations. Any of his what? Machination. Machination. His plan. Yeah. 
So theoretically, if we weren't steering clear of the machinations, how would we not get immediately killed by them? Well, uh, that's a great question. I guess do whatever he says. Hmm. So if you knew he was evil and you knew he was doing all this, why'd you let him play? I know the answer is because he doesn't care, but I wanted to say it. <laughs> well, love, uh, it's just the cost of doing business in the world below. It's buyer beware down here, love. You can get whatever you want for the right price. Okay. And it's not fair for me to say, America has done amazing things for our people. It's capitalism at its finest. If you can buy it, you can get it, darling. So, so Uderai is bad news. He's definitely powerful, deals with death, quite potent magic. I don't know what his deal with Mielasa is, but uh, you can be assured it's not good for anyone. Yeah, I guess Mielasa played here, and I guess her magic was working on the patrons, and were you forced to do that? Is that part oh, of the no, uh, That was part of the contract. I was yeah. happy to. Okay. So he turned off the magic whoop, whoop shield. Mm. How about because you're happy even well. having potentially lost clients? I mean, well, you know, people uh, seeing pants just vanish, run off. She's a, you know, she's here. a fae. Her her magic is not limited by this world. Uh, I couldn't stop her magic any more than you could. Just saying, you couldn't possibly be happy with the fact that she, you know, stole a lot of your patrons here. They got enchanted by her. Oh, love, there's always more. And you know, she wasn't always here. She came from the Fey Land. Good to know the the Feylands. Do you um, what are those like? Do you have a passport to get to there, or no, love? I've never been myself. I hear it's very magical. Fairies all over, very chaotic and wild. But uh, I hear there's wonders aplenty for those who want to pay for them. Mm -hmm. It only take maybe a memory, maybe year of your life, maybe a lock of your hair, who knows, if they are unpredictable, though. Mm. But he found her, he reached out to her. Is he, well, does he have any more? That's the question, why did she leave the Feywild and come yes. here? Right. That's what I was wondering. Presumably she could have food, she could feed there quite easily if that's where they all live. Yeah. Well, that's where they live, do they not have to feed there? Probably not. They probably just suck it in to the air. I don't know, but I'm assuming that they have a way. <laughs> so what did he promise her since he brought her? Because he what? found her, brought her here. What indeed? I wonder if he has any more clients or if it's just her. Oh, love, he has schemes within schemes. Like I said, I would steer clear of the creature. And if we were to steer clear, where would we not be going exactly? I would say anything dangerous or dark in Phoenix for the next uh, few months. Okay. Okay, that's most of Phoenix. Did he have anything to do with that crazy gymnastics meet? That's the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, love, that was him. What? Now I gotta go after him. Right. So the whole skull with glowing teeth, that was that was him. Dark, dark magic. That. Interesting. Human sacrifices to make those things. This might not even be his main plot then. This is something for something bigger. So why would he be gathering like all these people to be mindless zombies? I can think of a lot of reasons why you need people. 
or people who can just throw somewhere, not can deliver that. Very handy having a few hundred people who are slavishly charmed. Okay. I think we might be on a time limit, guys. I don't know what that is, but. So he, so he came in person. That means he's from around here somewhere. Or he can travel very fast, very far. But what? we're gonna hope it's not the latter. <laughs> I know, well, yeah, I'm, I suspect he can fly, but uh, no, he's here in the city. We can, you know, those of us who've been around for a while felt it when he came to town. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does he, did he come to the show itself or did he only come and book? Oh no, no, he just spoke to me direct. Mm -hmm. It's a sign of respect. He understood who I am. And um, in your discussions with him, do you maybe know which clubs you might be looking at next? Oh no, love, that's too pedantic for our chat. Mm. trying to think about how we can find this boy. <laughs> you happen to know if Mia Lawson eats up with him a lot. I mean, if I she's working think, for him, you think she'd have contact. I don't think Mia Lawson has any idea who her manager is. Mm. She did seem kind of clueless when we were talking to her. Yeah. Like that she was just here for good opportunity mm -hmm. or for whatever. Mia Lawson is just a pawn. She's not in on the ground floor. She's just here for whatever he, she was promised. She's just a fairy. They do deals. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. How did Mia seem to you? Did she seem like the kind of person who would usually be mixed up in with somebody like uh, Mr. Smith? Oh, uh, you can never tell with fairies, dear boy. Uh, the idea of good and evil doesn't really apply. They just uh, do. So yes, it would not surprise me at all for her to be mixed up with whomever. She might be mixed up with God-fearing priests for all I know. Interestingly enough, I do know what God can taste. <laughs> okay, well, I have, so, uh, I personally have an idea of how we might find. So, uh, find I would it. say deal with Milasa however you can, and I would not bother Mr. Smith if I were you. Okay, okay, we'll if take Mia that Lassa... into consideration. If we do something with Mialasa, isn't he going to be upset about that? Well, love, uh, you've got to be good. You can deal with her without him knowing, because like I said, they don't have a strong relationship. She's just a tool. Do you know the name of your wrench? Do you consult with your hammer about how it feels when it breaks. You just buy a new one. So I have some ideas. I'm not gonna, I don't want to talk to the, about them in front of Stone Cove. So uh, anyone else have any questions for uh, Stone Cove, my new drug dealer? gonna be fun. I can't wait to start suggesting to come to this place like every night for every investigation we do. We gotta go this is where we have all our after party so we're all our we're gonna, We have so to talk to Stone Cove. <laughs> I'm gonna die. It's gonna be the thing. <laughs> and then you'll come back as a vampire. I don't know if that's how vampires work, but. Well, loves, pleasure as always. Please feel free to stop by. Enjoy the uh, music if you want, dance the night away, and I will see you next time. Probably not that often. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know. He seems very useful. Confidence, let's go. <laughs>
he, uh, he gets a little hand wave and you guys uh, head out. Um, assaulted by the wall of sound when you leave his office. Um, head out where you can actually have a conversation. Um, so you uh, head back to Pi Square. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. We can have a little discussion about football sleep. No more uh, late nights for Malikin. <laughs> Oh, but I like staying night. up late. No. Talk, talk about okay, so what do we want? To talk? So here's my thoughts so far. Two, I have two immediate ideas that come into my head about how we can find him. One is a little more abstract than the other, but the other one's also way harder. So, you know, pros and cons, pros and cons. First one, I'll go with the more abstract one first. First one is he obviously he might have been like a not so good dude beforehand who knows about his morality before he was awakened but it was after he was awakened that he gained powers and he was able to do a bunch of shit and that's when he like i mean i don't know what awakened him but eventually that's what led to him leaving and coming here and doing this evil shit so if we can talk to his family and his co-workers Maybe the reason why the company originally failed was because he was awakened and he stopped caring three mm -hmm. years past because the company was seven years ago. His death was four years ago. Three years past, he does makes all these plans and now he's enacting them. Um, that doesn't really lead us to him, but it might give us final information that could potentially lead us to him. Like maybe we figure out what happened. We figure mm -hmm. out his motivations, et cetera. That can help us find him. Kind of taking the more criminal minds at <laughs> Uh, I, to him. I'm thinking that Stove Cove is like legit trying to help us out, and that like this dude will like mur straight murder us. If oh, one hundred percent, yeah, one hundred percent, and like That's very and very capable of doing so. Like, oh, I'm thinking this guy might like be something like a lich or something. Yeah. I don't know enough about D and D whether or not to agree with that, but I will trust that. What vague bits I know, but that sounds like I can I'm. Do that. I'm thinking like maybe we can, can like confront Milasa again that was my second option knowing like more information Mielasa. now that we know that trying she's to like deal, make her fire. more aware of like what she's dealing with and try to maybe convince her to go back to the Feywild or to wherever she came from or offer her something that's better than what he's offering her at least figure out what the deal was mm -hmm. and from there work with it like, what is he giving her? Yeah. <laughs> and what is she giving him? Because, I mean, he must and care about Milasa a little bit. She's since giving the people... him a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but if you let me finish my sentence, you'll know where I was going with it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, like, the people, she's giving him a lot of people, but these people are obsessed with her, not him. Mm -hmm. So, like, what's her? what's his plan with that specifically later on? Well, I mean, if he's the one in, in control or, like, if it's his power that's letting her do that, what's to say he couldn't just switch that to to himself? Because it's her or, power. He's just... If, is it? Because yeah. she said she didn't do she couldn't do that before coming here. She couldn't do it to the scale that she could before. No, it didn't do it at all, I thought. She was also she in said. the Feywild. This might she, not be right. affected in the Feywild. So, uh, so Cove said that magic works different here. Like you come here and you can suddenly do weird things. So maybe that's you know what she gets from coming over here. Um, and she's not the first Fey to be doing this. So yeah, either, she's not. This is a Fey trait. Mm -hmm. Or I'm not gonna be able to say it. Araya. Okay, said it. <laughs> I said I fear the name now. And Araya has been traveling and ha has tried this before, but failed. But it seems like they kind mm. of did it pretty easily last time. And he just kind of, if he really was just, you know, that just doesn't seem likely given what we know, but it's still very possible. Still very possible. Yeah. Well, and we know, didn't you say the last time was, it seemed like similar, I guess, mm -hmm. phenomenon, but potentially different motivations. The last person seemed malicious. malicious. Maybe they themselves were doing something. Mm -hmm. Whereas Mia Lhasa is careless for sure, but maybe not necessarily mm -hmm. malicious in the same way it sounds like them. So who's to say if he even was involved or if that's just right. a separate incident yeah, of same. similar type. Yeah, because like FaZe shouldn't be able to charm, like, I mean, maybe, but like, I if I had a guess, FaZe can't charm other FaZe and then the Fae Wild and stuff, so like because mm -hmm. otherwise there just might be like mass chaos yeah now they are awakened but i'm guessing not all awakened are fey 
right? Yeah. Right. Our favorite. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, like you were saying in the Feywild, if you're not you're not charming Fey, you're only charming other awakened. Mm -hmm. So. So lots of things. So this. Yeah. So I mean. I feel like we have a shot against Mia Lasa. I don't know if we have a shot against Mr. Smith yet. I don't think yeah. we can do anything about that's, him, but Malia Lasa. Getting, that's Malia that's Lasa my concern as now. well. Eventually, though, oh, I mean, yeah. I'm presuming you guys want your parents back one day. Oh, we'll yeah. have to deal with him. Oh, I certainly want my parents back. But we back. can slow him down. Yeah. And this should stop Mia Lasa for now. But if she really yeah. is just a pawn for bigger plan, he's just going to do it right on over again. We keep mm -hmm. going after him. Yeah. I mean, anything we can do to push back whatever he's working on or to mess him up. Yeah, or slow it down, anything. Yeah, longer we slow him Probably down. Probably a good thing. To figure out how to defeat him. But for now, we can start with handling Milasa. Maybe, yeah. maybe she's not aware of all that is going on with, with Mr. Smith. And if she knows, I don't know if she'd care anymore. I don't think, I don't she, think would. she would. Jinx <laughs> again, Carol. That's two cokes now. Yeah, yeah. Running a tab here. Uh -huh. But put my money minus. <laughs> what did I land down like minus 400 or something and two <laughs> cokes? You kidding me? That gun you bought was way over $400. Yeah, up. So, Mia Loss's next show, Nora can find without too much difficulty. Now you guys know. You've done this enough times. You're pretty good. At, you're pretty good at it. Okay. Um, there's the timeout lounge. Um, it's kind of in nowheresville. Um, it's west of Mesa, um, and it's in a strip mall. Um, kind of like the uh, the other one that you guys hit. That was in a strip mall. There's also like a little piano, piano lounge, bar, restaurant type thing. All right. So probably that one. Yeah, that sounds good. Because I mean, we didn't want to do anything at the last place because there were a lot of people. But I, I have a feeling that we're on. You know, I don't know how long of a time limit, but yeah, we can't keep letting her get away. We've got to do something one way or another, and if that means taking swift, fierce action, then that might be what it's coming down to. If we can't figure out something else. Mm -hmm. So you guys, uh, again, you guys have done this enough times now. So, you know, stick it out. She shows up, the band, sh or the band shows up. She shows up later, um, performs, takes a break, performs again, and then heads out. So what's the play? Do we want to bring a bag of flour per person to throw on her when the doors open? <laughs> Just follow her around like a ghost. I mean, I feel like the moment that we throw the flower, she'll know we're on to her. So I don't think it's so much a matter of following her at that point as it is um, she just can't just getting the jump on her right there. That's a fair point. Yeah, I just really like the visual of throwing flower on her. I mean, we can do that. That'll be the scare tactic. That'll be the scare tactic. I mean, yeah, the jump on her right then and there will certainly be easier if we can see her. But just in case why don't we go cool. talk to her again? We, we are. <laughs> but like, instead of throwing flour at her. Yeah, because the flour was fun. Do we want to talk to her though? Because I mean, we didn't what, get what very far you? last time. So I'm what, saying, what, what would you want, want to do? Shoot her in the ass legal. We know a lot more now. <laughs> I'm saying, you know, either follow her to try to find where she's at, um, track her somehow to try to find where she's at, or nab her or something. But, if we're trying to be convincing, <laughs> Grabbing her is probably not going to help convince her. I mean, we could find out what this guy offered her and see if we can right. somehow get her a better deal. Mm -hmm. But if we kidnap her, I don't think that would go well. I say we try and talk to her and just maybe she doesn't know what she's gotten herself wrapped up into. And even if she doesn't care about everybody else that it's affecting, maybe herself. maybe Stove Cove's warning of like, you don't want to get mixed up with this. Maybe she doesn't want to be mixed up with with all of that. Maybe like, I'm willing willing to give her another chance, but I mean, eventually, we're running out of chances with her. They're building up to something, and she doesn't care. She doesn't want to listen to reason. I think we might need to think about more. 
decisive well, then maybe actions. We, maybe we can try and talk to her and convince her at the break again. Yeah. I think okay. focusing on her like selfish desire or whatever we want to call it would be yeah. a better approach. She clearly doesn't yeah, get self preservation her. rather than yeah. uh, caring about other people. Yeah. yeah. Compassion or empathy. empathy. Yeah. I don't think she has a lot of empathy. Mm -hmm. okay, so who's gonna who's self preservation? Gonna her, who's gonna talk to her at the band break? <coughs> Nora, do you wanna do it again? And this time just be really direct. Yeah, I guess I'll try again. <laughs> you can just tell her like, look, this is what you've gotten yourself mixed up in and it's dangerous to you and you probably don't want to be a part of it. Some, yeah, some kind of death magic, like death magic. Both, we compromised. <laughs> okay, so you guys are uh, outside as usual, listening to the music, but not able to be charmed. Um, you know, you know the pattern pretty well by now. So the first band break, yeah. So the question, what's the layout of this place? Is it, is there um, a backstage area by any, of any sort? Um, so it's at the end of a strip mall. So when you walk in the front door, the stage is immediately to your right. There's a bunch of booths to your left. There's a bunch of pool tables to your right. At the end is a bar. Okay, so Nora, um, you head in. The music is, uh, is stopped. Um, you see that uh, layout. Um, there's a moderate number of people here. Again, similar clientele to what you've observed before. There's also a few more um, kind of like rough looking, you know, people like leather jackets and bald heads and, you know, um, clearly biker types, not, not actually like a gang or anything, but just, you know, some slightly rough types, um, here, uh, the band or the stage is immediately to your right. When you walk in, um, you see Milasa sitting there, um, with, um, John, uh, Norris. Okay. Um, I'll go walk up to, where are the like more rough looking guys? Are there any near? They're, they're very cool. So they're a little bit further away. Okay. Uh, I will walk up to both of them. Okay. Um, okay. He also looks up at you. Oh God, not you again. What do you want? Oh, I just wanted to see if I could chat. I'll wave over at John. Hey John, how are you doing? Hey, Nora. Um, do you mind if you give us some privacy real quick? I wanted to talk to Lee Lassa about um, like her inspirations and her um, like artists and everything. Yeah, sure. He kind of organizes his set and then heads out into the bar. Lee Lassa looks up at you. What? Well, um, I was just coming to try to talk with you again to be, um, see if you would listen to reason one more time. Um, any thoughts on that? What do you mean? Like, like what I'm doing is perfectly reasonable. I don't know what your problem is. Well, I'm thinking the manager that you're working for is not a great person. You're not a great person. <laughs> um, he is involved in some very dangerous things, and I think that you could get hurt in all of this, and I don't want to see you get hurt. Okay, give me a persuasion. Top of the page. It is 16. Okay. Um, she, she pauses and thinks about it, and she's like, yeah, I mean, he'd have to be scary and dangerous to give me what I want. Like, nice people don't get that kind of power. Well, what exactly did he offer you? I mean, it sounds like you were having a pretty great life before. Yeah, it was fine, I guess, but he's going to make me a she when I go back. What the heck is that? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, arcana or nature. Do what now? You can roll Arcana or Nature. Okay. Bad at both of those. Let's see. Come on, natural roll. Which one are you going to roll for? 
Uh, they're both zero. I guess I'll do Arcana, which I rolled a six, so there you go. Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Magic stuff. <laughs> um, all right. And is there a, no other way that you can obtain this? I mean, there's lots of ways, but this one's easy. I just like show up here and sing. This is cool. These people like me. I'm like you. What's your problem? But what if in the end, aren't you scared that he might not do that and just sort of like get rid of you? I mean, these evil people, like they don't care about you. You're just another thing to him. Yeah, like whatever, I'll deal with it. You really think that you can take on this guy? Yeah, maybe, whatever. Who cares? Get out of here. You seriously think you can take him on by yourself if he were to get rid of you? Or try to? Look, I'm done talking to you. Go. All right. I'll just turn around and walk off. It was, it was a compelling argument, just not a good enough persuasion role for <laughs> for fighting her off for a powerful uh, promotion, basically. Yeah, I rolled a 10, so. <laughs> yeah. That's tough. So, well, she was talking and like, I'm sitting there watching, you know, this go down to try to gauge, um, you know, if it seems like it's going to be successful or, you know, seems like she's being persuaded by this or not. Uh, did you say there was a backstage area or just like open stage, like there yeah. wouldn't be any sort of area for, um, I guess her stuff is there do I see around like either did she bring it back did she bring in anything that might be set somewhere no, no she somewhere. actually never has even a handbag with her all right okay I'll go to that one you were gonna go okay. through yeah, well I only go through her stuff you, oh you were just gonna take it <laughs> no I know I was gonna I was gonna try to try to draw something in to track it but that didn't work okay so now what, uh, so that didn't work so we're on to Fitz's plan I dropped my cell phone Fitz never had a plan so. but yes it's never had a plan. Okay, somebody's plan to, to nab her or something. Kidnapping. <laughs> kidnapping. What is that kidnapping? That was Carol's plan. I want to point that out. Fitz doesn't like breaking the law, believe it or not. Yeah, okay. That's fair. All right, so what are you, how are you guys going to execute this? Do I mean, I'm still not convinced we have to. I mean, she wants to become a sheep, right? That's what you said. <laughs> Honestly, that's what I heard. Uh, yeah, I could. Uh, she? Like, she? That might be what you heard. <laughs> so, are I'm you gonna are you gonna relate this this experience, Nora, to the rest of the rest of the team? Yes, I will. Okay. Yeah. It was it what was it what? Uh, Malachi, you want to roll Arcana? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Because I'm just gonna keep saying sheep. <laughs> I'm going to use my that, point of inspiration from last time to legit. try and do better on that. Whoop, throw it off the table. Was it she? That's better. Uh, total of 20. Okay, how does that uh, inspiration manifest? Uh, just the, like a flash of brilliance of like, oh wait, no, I have looked at this before. <laughs> this, this is something I remember reading in my, on one of my like long random internet rabbit trails. <laughs> Oh, I should have used uh, yeah. inspiration. Um, so the she, um, and it's spelled in a messed up way because the Irish hate English. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, I, I literally said she. Yeah. Um, so you know that the she are the uh, elven lords of the fairies. And um, one can progress through the various ranks of fairy, like you can become a little, you can start as a little dewdrop uh, pixie, and as you accumulate power, become a bigger, more powerful species, basically. Um, so you, so based on what Nora's describing, you're thinking that she's working to accumulate, she's like taking the short option, like usually doing, getting that much power is very hard and takes a long time. And so it seems like she's taking a shortcut to get there. Um, so she's going to become a fairy lord, basically, if this goes through. That's not something we can provide. I was going to say, if, they, if we could get that for her, we should. Forge a title. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we have the sway. Yeah. But, like, how does this guy have that, too? Oh, I, mean... I doubt that he does, but I feel like he's convinced <laughs> her that he does. 
it's it's magical power it's not a political oh. thing yeah well, he gives I, I mean if he's as powerful as love hearts pop up stone cove <laughs> then, <laughs> um then he probably can just i mean he's making her this powerful to do all this i'm sure he can give her even more i guess but we barely know how to turn on a light bulb even with the switch so i don't i don't think we have anything magical to give her to help up her ranks so to speak i feel like she was so close to like when i mentioned that I don't know. She seemed like open to the idea. She seemed open to the idea when I mentioned that he was so, bad but, news, but I don't know. I just couldn't convince her. Because hmm. uh, unless so, we can convince her that we can give her power and then do it nicer, I don't think we're going to. Maybe we can't convince her that maybe we can't offer her that kind of power, but we can. <laughs> Maybe if we find some some person that has tried to deal with this guy before and it turned out badly, maybe she'll see that taking the shortcut's really not a good idea. Okay. Maybe we can we dig up somebody else who's are dealt you, with this guy and it turned out. Color a moral tale. No, we want to see like an example of like <laughs> someone who has tr tried dealing with this this specific person oh, before. This specific person, oh, okay. And it like really ended poorly for them. Okay. And so like th this guy is like it's not worth the risk of dealing with this particular yeah. character. I'm yeah, I don't think sure you be swayed by like some moral. I was like, I'm pretty sure it ended poorly with this dude. Just... Means they're dead. Dead. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably, and and that might be it. Might be you. <laughs> you 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 can be the morality tale. <laughs> true, true. If we can somehow convince her that he's not going to do what he says he will, she'd probably stop. That's like, true. If we could, I mean, the only thing that I can think of is we go talk to him with a recording device planted, but <laughs> but I think we'll die. <laughs> Thank you. Take him down like yeah. Al Capone, get him on tax fraud or something. Listen, I'm really focusing on the investigative TV show aspect of this. That's where I'm getting all of my inspiration from. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that that is what Fitz would do too. Well, also remember that she she is a magical creature. Like she doesn't read as human in a lot of ways, right? Yeah, like, that's what. In terms, in terms right, of right, right, right. Like official. Does that hold up in court? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. Like, what's she gonna do? Is she gonna go to the human cops? Like, I mean, is that something that tackling her in the in the strip mall with cameras and humans might involve the cops if she doesn't. I mean, she goes out the back like she did the last time. I doubt there was I mean, any cameras back there. She's invisible. What do the cameras say? Speak not nothing. We're beating up ourselves. <laughs> 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 Not convinced. You got me. I'm in. <laughs> okay, so are we gonna try this? Did you actually bring that bag of flower fits like you were talking about? Uh, I thought we were doing a fun compromise. I brought my zip ties and I brought my magic spells. Huh. I have guys, guys. What you got? I have my ball bearings. I can scatter them outside the door. Tripper. I mean, like, if somebody else comes out first, they trip, we reset. I'm so sorry, I dropped these. Whoops. Keep going, and we just keep going until someone trips and there's no one there, and then... <laughs> Love it. Into it. I mean, that sounds fun. I'm into it. No. I mean, and Nora knows... I, I know that, like, Milasa doesn't hang out with John Norris or whatever that name is, but they probably parked in the back, and she's probably going to leave out the back, too, so... Mm -hmm. if he, Okay, so the plan is scattered ball bearings by the back door. Uh, where are you guys going to be positioned in relationship? Are you just going to be like a semicircle around it so that like anybody comes out, they hit the ball bearings, they go down, you jump on them? Or... We don't want to be seen from the door because if she opens the door and sees us, she might back out. So okay, yeah. we don't want to be visible until the ball bearings have been reached. Are there any like AC yeah. units or anything or any kind of like yeah, you got, you got, you got power boxes? Yeah, you have cover for stealth for sure. Yeah, well, do we even want to like bring around a car? Do you have in the car? It will take time for us here? to get out of the car as opposed to popping out of a bush. That well, I'm saying it's like we're behind the car. Oh, that. oh, like bring a car. I got you. Yeah. If you want. Plus if we, you know. I have my Jeep with no doors. 
Okay, so where so where does everybody want to be? Um, Let me be hiding behind a box or something. Okay, okay. great. No problem. Yeah, I'm gonna hide too. Okay. Yeah. Room? Like any behind like a power box or like a edge of the building or something. I mean, it is it is on the end of the strip mall, so someone could be like right around the corner of the edge of the building. I I might hide there because I have command to try and stop her if I can somehow yeah. locate see her. Okay. And so, so um, I'm still within 60 feet of the back door. That way I have a nice solid radius of command. Yeah, yeah I probably want to be somewhere like nearby. That way if we do have to reset the bulbing. Again, if somebody else does come out, do you want me to be there and be like, ooh, whoops, my bad? Or do you just want to like <laughs> leave it there and wonder like, what happened here? Oh no, my marble. Because I can just casually, you know, again, last time, smoke break. Um, and then uh, did you have a car? I mean, you could be, you have your car parked there, but did you want it like blocking anything or? Did anyone want my car blocking anything? Um, are there any other cars parked back here? Like yeah, did the other did like the band members? Five. Okay. It's not, no, John's, really... car, John's parked in front. Okay, so we're not even worried about So we, I don't know, do we want to worry about blocking people in? We probably don't want a lot of people stuck back here for yeah. grabbing somebody. Yeah. And I don't think she drives anyway, so she could just walk around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, my car has no door. She could just walk through it. Okay. Do you, what, is there a mechanic with the ball bearings, Carol? Or? Uh, yes. Yeah, there, there is. is. Hold on. Um... Flashback to Christine. Yeah, let me, let me look that up really fast, because there is something about... Um... It's an action I can spill. Yeah, I can spill these tiny. Spill them in an area ten feet, based on like that size. Um, creature moving across covered area must exceed DC ten Dex saving throw or fall prone. Okay. Um, unless they're moving at half speed, but my hope would be that if she doesn't notice that it's there, she's great. not going to know to like be careful of it. Great. Okay. Great. Okay, um, so she, uh, you, you assume it's her. The door opens, there's nobody there. Um, you see the ball bearings scatter. Um, so you have a, a bead on her position, but she does not apparently wipe out. Um, actually, let's roll initiative real quick. Are you guys okay going a little over time? Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's that's fine. Fine. Okay, we should be able to wrap this pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm assuming, like, even if she's not scattered, that we're planning to help jump on her. Yeah. I, we're a very talkative group. The four of us are. We like to plan. We once did a whole like five hour session, and I think it was just planning. I'm you know, sure whatever is exactly. fun for you guys is the important thing. We're talkers. Um, That's what we are. Yeah. We had, we had another one that was a combat encounter where we planned for like an hour, and then the combat yeah. was literally around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we, set up, we set up this elaborate trap we that triggered that. and worked beautifully and Dude. ended the combat in one round, but it took You're us an hour to movies? set up that trap. Yes, I am with oh, the, with so the fire good. and the oil yeah, trap. <laughs> oh, um, I've rolled, but then forgot my deck. Hold on. Mine was uh, 20, actually. <laughs> Yeah, mine is a flat roll because I have no decks. Yep. Okay, Carol, first to act. Yeah. So as soon as I see the door open and those wall bearings scatter, I'm like watching the ground to see where that movement is. And I just want to lunge and jump and try to grapple. Okay, great. Um, so making an attack against invisible creatures. <laughs> so you have a disadvantage. So roll through your hips. Okay. Um, you said that's disadvantage? Correct. I would like to use my human determination to get oh. advantage and cancel that out. Right. Uh, what was this again? An attack roll. An attack roll. So would that be with proficiency? What? So uh, proficiency and would that be like strength, dex? Yes. Yep, strength bonus. It did have to be strength. Okay. Um. Uh, plus proficiency, proficiency. That's do uh seventeen. 17. Hey, okay, nice. great. You never give me opposed athletics. Opposed athletics? Yep. She, she's flailing. Oh, God. That's a four. A 
before. Okay. Um, so you you hit her, um, even though you can't see her, um, but she slips out of your fingers. Hmm. Um, but you're right next to her. You know where she is. Uh, yeah. Fits. You see, Carol, you see Carol hitting, you know, trying to grab something and try and all this does, but then it's right. like, I can't do command because unfortunately can't see yep. I can't see. So the only thing, although I think if she did an opposed athletics check to not be grappled, that would be an action. So she becomes visible. <gasps> Ooh, okay. Well then I will, if, if that is the case, I'll do command. If not, I will probably. Yep. Just end up doing the same thing. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. So I will do. Oh, shoot. I just closed command. Command. Come back to me. Come back. Okay. So I'll do command. Okay. And I'll just say, um, let's see. I could make her fall prone, or I could just tell her to halt and doesn't move and takes no action. So I'll say halt because you'd still take an action while prone, right? That's how it works. Right. Okay, so halt yeah, better because yeah. then she can't take an action. Okay, I will say halt, and that is a it doesn't say. Roll twenty. Why have you failed me like this? A wisdom saving throw. Okay, and my DC is doesn't matter. She what was the command? Halt, halt. which means okay. that they, she has to stop and take no action. Okay, so she is there. She is visible. She is halting. <laughs> Um, Nora. Hmm. Zip tie. Zip tie. <laughs> ah, Jesus. I can put her to sleep. Um, yeah, mm. possible. Uh, actually, give me a arcana check on that one. On, for me? Yep. Because she's a... Uh, uh, no. Well, I don't have a character I'm knowledge of D&D, &D, but oh, yeah. yeah. You might not know. Nora doesn't know. I mean, we did get rid of the fairy. Eighteen. Um, yeah, it's a fairy. It's probably resistant to charm effects like sleep. Mm, okay. Do I have the zip ties? Up. Um, you do not have zip ties, but you can grab one from Fitz. I mean, they're always like sticking half out of her belt. I mean, she did brandish like a bundle of them earlier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she like has a handful of them. She just like stuffs. Into I, her pocket. I, I grabbed. Do I just need one fits? Is this how you do this? Um, <laughs> it depends on how you want to do it. Yeah, if you want to like zip tie one, if you want to zip, if you want to take three and do one, two, and then zip tie those two together, so the Lord. Okay, so you. Got, you can you, in the time. It's an art have, form. In the time that you have, you can put just one. one. I'll put so one. Tell on. you, uh, give me a sleight of hand check, Nora. Right. Zip tie her ankles. I don't know. Whatever you want. That is a one. Oh. <laughs> so you, you put the zip tie in like backwards so that it doesn't actually like click together. It was possible, Nora. Don't, oh, God. Don't, I totally Were you got it. Chop on this. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll I was the, the, the person doing this. I know. This we all awesome. have our skills. You're the talker. I'm the zip tire. I okay, totally Alex, understandable. I Um, Mal Malachi is gonna say, "Give me one of those," and grabs one and tries to to zip tie her as well. <laughs> All right, roll your uh, man. Uh, that's a fourteen. Fourteen. Okay, that's good enough. Um, so you successfully apply the uh, zip ties um, immediately before she gets to act. Um, so she's gonna slide a hand out of them. Um, and does not succeed. So she's sitting there struggling. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you freaks? God damn it. Get out of my way. Why did you put on my arms? Um, back to the top, Carol. Uh, uh, I'm going to scramble up. Um, I'm going to pull the gun. Safety's still on. But I'm gonna <laughs> that and say, I'd recommend stopping. No. <laughs> Oh, oh boy. Uh, we'll move. It did Sorry, move. guys. Okay, we'll I'm backing up. away. I'm like starting to run away. I'm like, come on, Malachi. <laughs> okay, we're going to move out of initiative because she is uh, effectively subdued and uh, not willing to uh, get shot. 
Like, oh, God. Okay, guys. Want. We oh want you to stop this. We want you to leave. We want you to not hurt anyone else here again. Where am I supposed to go? Go home. No way. There's got to be somewhere where I can still do my thing. You're saying of kidnapping people? I'm of ruining lives? People. You Look, stole lady. my son. Look, lady, I'm not leaving. And I'm just barely putting up with you. One way or another, we're stopping you. We can do this easy and you can go home. But you can't keep doing this. Not the legal going ramifications home. of you shooting this person right now. I mean, hey, you shoot her, you shoot her, we'll deal with the fault. I support you with whatever you decide. I'm just, woo, we're still trying to get the law and order and not CSI. <laughs> right. Can't you just sing in another town? Wait, where? Well, I've heard of this other place, and I'm like, I'm totally making this. I don't know where to go. <laughs> oh, the, the, one that, the, 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 the one with no awakened yeah, people that we say. were mentioned earlier. Um, I can tell you the name of that. It's Goodyear. 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 <laughs> what about Goodyear? I hear that has a great um, places to play. There's a lot of people. It's a big population. Um, will, will you like set up my first gig? Yeah, I'd totally be happy to do that. Um, okay, like, whatever. Yeah, fine. I'll send in you next week, and you'll tell me where we'll go. Okay. Did you tell him the truth that she lied? Is she being honest? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm watching her, yeah. Um, mm. You believe her? <laughs> but I still got that gun trained on her. Right. Uh, I'm gonna roll your insights. That's fine. Um, I like how we were all like, you little liar. Like, <laughs> 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 I mean, we're threatening I mean she's guy. at gunpoint. She very well maybe is just saying whatever to get out from right. being zip tied right, at gunpoint. Right, Carol, you guys are undecided. Malachi, she is 100% lying. Fitz, uh, I'm pretty sure she's telling the truth. Well, how unfortunate that was, wasn't it? <laughs> I trust her. I think. I don't. I think she just wants out of this. You know, I'm not 100%. I, I do think... too. I think she's telling the lie. It's telling a lie to get out of this. She looks Don't shifty. you lie to us. Yeah, why? Come on, don't do that. So she <laughs> she uh, she does something and gets the zip tie off. And she's like, look, you freaks. I'm just playing with you. You don't know what you're messing with here. So if you find me a venue, like, whatever, it's fine. But I'm not going to deal with your stupid game anymore. Um, and she flies away. Oh, okay, well, thanks. okay. Wait, when you said she flies away, was there movement? Like, would I have had time to respawn? Uh, you can shoot her. Sh <laughs> Are you actually gonna shoot gonna her? Shoot her? I, I mean, I'm, yeah, 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 I think in this moment, yeah, yeah, I'm firing a shot, flipping, flipping that safety. Oh, yeah. god, this video oh. is you don't have oh, a silencer boy. on your gun. <laughs> oh, god. We're in a freaking shopping <laughs> mall. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll two hits. Okay, hold on, let me find my, my gun stats. Oh boy. Oh god. Everyone in a very close vicinity is going to hear this. I know. Again, I'm just going to preemptively apologize, guys. It's fine. But... No, 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 no. It's chill. It's cool. You want tinnitus? Because this is how you get tinnitus. <laughs> <laughs> None go of on. us are going head here. I don't know if I want this to hit or not. So here we go. Oh god. Uh, let's see. 12. That's going to be Dex. 13. 15. 14. Oh, that's going to be 15 total to hit. Okay. She casts shield. Um, so you shoot at her and it hits some invisible barrier before it gets to her. Um, right. She, yeah. Damn uh, it. I guess we can recycle. We better recycle initiative if you guys are going to shoot at her. <laughs> oh, is she right? <laughs> yeah, keep <it> <laughs> She's running. So, you know, I thought maybe she'd keep running. Oh, oh yeah, I just dropped my D20 into the abyss. Yeah. I'm gonna Fitz. get a new D20. New D20. Fitz. Hi. How are you doing? Oh, oh, we're recycling as and we're just using the old one. Yeah, we're just yeah. Oh, I, I thought we were rolling. Okay. Sorry. I got you. I misunderstood recycling. Yep. So uh, Carol's gone, Fitz. 
I'm trying to decide if the word, because like with command, I'm allowed to choose my own words. I'm trying to decide if the word, but it has to be one word. If the word return means she's going to come back. Um, or if I want to just say halt again and she can't do anything for a round. You guys got her. Halt's reliable. I'm going to cast command again. Okay. And I'm going to say halt. Okay. Okay. Which means she stays in the air. Um, right. Um, and she already used her reaction, so bummer. Um, okay, she pauses. She's in there for one round, everybody. Uh, okay. Nora. Um, is she in the air right now? Yeah, she's, she's about to be in the air. Up. She didn't get very far. What do you want me to do? I don't want to hurt her. I that you've already, got two turns we've until kind of already fired gun, a, a so. gun at her luckily we're part of the no nora is disengaging and getting out of here <laughs> uh malachi is gonna try and yoink her back to the ground um okay he's gonna cast a puppet oh shit okay um so that is a con save, okay. I believe. Uh, yeah. She makes it. Yeah, it's a DC 14 con save. Okay. Yep. Okay. So he tries to like yoink her back down and it doesn't work. She's still just like floating there in the air. Yep. Um, and then he's okay. going to run off in the direction that Nora just ran. <laughs> okay. So then she, so halt, she loses her action now? Yes. Okay. She can't take an action. Okay. Reaction replenishes though. Re recycle to the top, Carol. Shoot, shoot her again. Okay. Shoot her again. Heck, look. <laughs> can okay. I make it Carol. worse? <laughs> Carol. Yes, yes, you can. If you murder someone, Carol. Okay, Carol. It's like I will be honest, uh, uh, Renee slash Fitz. You may want to stop me. <laughs> I might. This isn't. This this isn't a person. I get one more yeah. round. This isn't a person. But someone's gonna get notified. The cops have probably already it's been 14. called. They're on the way. Fourteen. Okay, hang on a sec. So the duration is one round. Yes. So is that until it cycles back to your initiative? Uh, let me look at. I'm pulling up that um, that spell to double check it. Um, it doesn't clarify when it stops. Yeah, this says duration. Um, I think that usually means a yeah. pull until your next turn. It's usually how I've always understood and always played it as. So and that was, you said halt? I did. So the target doesn't move and takes no action. The flying creature stays aloft, provided that. So yeah, that would be like so. one round of her turn. I think it would be. I think it's just until it gets back to the person who cast that. Yeah, that's what I interpret as well. Okay, so she um, doesn't have shield on and can't take any reaction. So you hit her. Yeah. Roll your damage. Yeah. Oh, that D10 plus was the stacks, right? Mine. Stacks. Yeah. That will be ten points of damage, but that's not a not a ten roll. That's a nine okay, plus a one. Got it. Okay, great. You shoot her again, Carol. Uh, Fitz. Carol. <laughs> Carol. <Man -over. laughs> Can't At this point, we've already shot. We've already shot. Yeah, Might as well keep shooting. Just, no, well, well, there's a difference between you shoot someone they're still alive when the cops show up, or if you shoot someone and they're dead when the cops show up. Still looking alive still. Yeah, she's fine. She's not gonna be invisible to the cops. They're just gonna be confused and think it's really she's weird. She's in the air. She's not invisible right now. Right. Doesn't matter if she's in the air. Malachi's cat flies, but humans can still see that as a weird <laughs> bat. So <laughs> oh, look, what are we doing? So not they may not her. see her. So they probably won't see her as a normal human either. <laughs> You're oh, shooting okay. some other thing out of the air. Oh, right. then that just makes it all okay. <laughs> And it totally absolves us from everything. 
Okay, um, so you're trying to rationalize with Carol any movement? Um, I was going to back up slightly because I, as far as I'm aware, Malachi and Nora have bolted out of here yep. and are gone. Like, Carol, I don't know what your plan is here, but like, everyone else okay. left. They're gone. They're out. Okay, Nora, um, you, so you're around the corner by now. Uh, where are you going to go? Are you going to hit your car? Um, I'm the posse is Malachi, how close Malachi is. He's pretty close. He's about 30 feet behind you. Okay. Um, I guess, uh, do I notice if like in, anybody else heard the gunshots? I mean, it's not just happened, so not really. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'll go to the, um, how far away am I from the car? Uh, you could get there next round. Well, the car's in the back where she is. That's your car, but you also have a car, don't you, Nora? No, Nora doesn't have a car. Uh, oh, it's, it's Summer. Carol, yeah, there's, Carol. Yeah, the car is back where the bad guys are. Yeah, and Carol brought from. her own car. I figured we all fit in one, so. Yeah, I mean, we do. But like. Yeah, and since we're not planning on, you know, having any unwilling passengers this time, we don't need extra seats. Carol. <laughs> Yeah, so I was that, like, was why, that was there's, that was why we brought the, the other that, cars last time. Yeah. It's a yeah. corner strip mall. Um, it's our bus a bus stop. Parking lot. Yeah, there's only a bus stop. Okay, cool. How far away from the bus stop am I? Uh, it's about three rounds. It's on the other. Just, of the just go away from the bus. All right. Am I like in the road? Okay, I'm gonna like wait for Malachi. Lot. Basically, I'm gonna get to like a safe spot, and then I'm gonna wait for Malachi. Okay. Um, okay, Malachi, you see Nora. Malachi's, Malachi's going to turn and, and how far away is he from Mielasa? Well, you did a move back, uh, so about 40 feet. Okay, he's going to turn back and, and uh, cast Mind Sliver at her before he runs around, runs away towards Nora. Okay, great. So that's an intelligence saving throw, DC 14. Okay. Uh, she hits that. Okay. So he is gonna. So they just didn't do anything. So he's just gonna run. Okay. Uh, follow it. Well, he's gonna like hide around the corner, heading in Nora's direction, but not like full on sprinting because he's still like concerned about Fitz and Carol who are still lingering behind We're the building. A nice trail. Okay. Do you want to see? Do you want to be able to have eyes on them? Like you yes, he wants to still, he wants to be kind of around the corner, still having eyes on the two of them. Okay, great. Yeah, so you can see Nora. She's obviously waiting for you. You can see these two. Uh, Mia Lassa takes a move, uh, flies 30 feet up, and casts Fireball. We're going to die. You know who has five health? Me. <laughs> Thanks, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, I love it though. <laughs> our parents are dead and our friends are dead. We're starting a new life. Okay. Okay. Next, uh, next 30, <laughs> Get on the bus and just keep going. Get on that bus. Security <laughs> saving throw, DC 15. Uh, all so who, all, who all needs to make that? Uh, just Fitz and Carol. She's Wonderful. Okay. Deck save. Deck save. Deck save. It's so weird. This is like the only character I play that doesn't have saving throw in deck, like proficiency. Ooh, that's a 20. 21. Uh, that's a 22. I don't think it's going to help me, but at least I have it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, feels good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so you guys both succeeded? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we both still take half damage of whatever's about to happen, right? Right. Exactly. And so I'm dead. Is the, is um, yeah, because if it exceeds your max hit points, then you're dead, right? Yeah. If you, you go more die, than neg if you go negative your half your total hit points. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was thirty. My total hit points are is five. So okay. so it was thirty points of damage, so you each take fifteen. I'm dead. Like I yeah, you're, you're dead. I'm dead, dead. <laughs> yeah, because I've only got nine hit points. So I can dead too. Make, yeah. Are you dead too? You're you're right. Wow. No, no, she's not. She's not killed outright, right? All right, right. no, because you take negative nine, and then because you'd be at six, nine. So minus there's six, six left, so you're minus six. So you're still alive. You take. You okay. can do death saves and whatever. So I'm in death saves now. I yeah, you're unconscious. I'm that. dead. Yeah. Yeah. So Carol, yeah, Carol's unconscious. Um, and then and I'm your healer. 
I have cure wounds. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, back to uh, Nora's not sure if she wants to bring you back to life, though. Yeah, Nora doesn't even know that's that so it sad. happened. You're gone. You're at, a, you're at a thing. Yeah, I don't see what happened to Malachi. Yeah, I don't think I you know. Have probably <laughs> have seen the fire, though. Yeah, Malachi, you see this. You know what a fireball is, and that's what she just cast. Um, so between fly and fireball, you peg her as a reasonably powerful magic user. And now that you realize what's happening, you realize you probably grossly in, uh, did not analyze her intentions correctly when you decided she was lying or not, that she was probably telling the truth and she was just being patient with you guys and could have duped you at any time. That's what I was wondering. <laughs> I said she was telling the truth. This is Fitch's ghost. I rolled, I rolled the one for Malachi's insight. Um, okay, back to the top of the order. Carol, death save. Yeah, it has to be fully. I just double checked myself, and it, it is full hit point negatives. That yeah, that's a four. four. Even with um, that's even if I didn't get stone coved, I would, would that have exceeded you? Okay, that would have exceeded. My health was nine. Uh, that was a four. No, it was five. Uh, Nora. Um, so oh, well, you would have. This oh, yeah, I would have lived, you, I guess. But. And you see this eruption of fire. Um, you you didn't see it exactly, so you're not sure what's going on. But it's whatever, something bad just happened to Carol and Fitz, you think. I'm immediately running to, like, go to Malachi. I'd be like, what just, like, can I get to Malachi? You can get to Malachi this turn, yeah. Malachi, what just happened? Oh, my God. Our, what fireball. A fi it was a fireball. A fireball? Oh my god. There <laughs> it's do I, I look up as they uh, both Mielasa, just got blasted. Is Mia Lassa still around? Yeah, she's 40 feet up. Uh, I will run over to that was, uh, that was your your movement was actually to get to Malachi. Okay. Well that was your that was your movement. And I don't think you know that Fitz is dead yet and Fitz is closer. No. But yeah. you just see uh, that we're both unconscious. So oh Malachi, God. you yeah, you see their their uh, drop there. Um, you see Milasa. Um, what are you gonna do? I'm just gonna yell at Milasa. You can go now. They're done. <laughs> and then yeah, I'm gonna so run over you, and give me a persuasion check. Could you also log two uh, damaging spells at her? I'm just gonna put this away. Uh, no more. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> All right, she turns and kind of glares at you. Uh, and then he's just going to like r run for cover. Okay, like away from her? Yeah, away from her. Okay. Okay, so she, got, she was dealing with you guys, then she got shot, and then she got hurt. And she's dealt with that. I'm the one who hasn't hurt so... her at all. <laughs> But I'm dead. She's not, she's not going to be vengeful towards Malachi today. Um, so she just flies off. And we are out of initiative order. Um, Carol, give me another death save. Actually, we better maintain initiative until Carol stabilizes. What was that? Another, death, another death, death save, please. Oh, OK. Uh, 17 success. 17. One fail, one success. OK, Fitz is out. Nora. <laughs> All right, I, I should have done that while I was drinking water. That did not. Uh, <laughs> well. I check both of them to see what's going on. Okay, give me a medicine check. You all better give me a hella good funeral is all I'm gonna say. Okay, I roll. I think I don't think I have anything in medicine. Let me check. Oh, I do. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay, yeah. Fitz um, looks like she's not breathing at all, and you presume she is dead. Uh, Carol is. Struggling for life. All right, I I don't have cure wounds stable. I'm gonna cast cure wounds. <laughs> okay, that, that's all I got. Pleasure. Yep. Okay. Uh, good. Familiar wounds. Uh, hold on. What's it? It's a good thing you had cure wounds prepared because I certainly did not today. <laughs> well, bards have to learn their spells. It's the only I don't prepare. Oh, I just yeah, she doesn't prepare them. I just I just, ha I just know so many spells. I've just been having command and protection from good and evil prepared every single day for the last like three weeks. Okay, hold you on. should so get more spells than that. Right? No, I think I just get two. 
Eight plus which doesn't sound right. Oh, wait, so I rolled eight. I mean, I know more spells, but I can only prepare two. What's my spell casting modifier? Is that it would be charisma? Charisma. Right? Okay, so eight plus four, 12. <coughs> Unless I uh, am horrible at playing. Back up like, that's totally, very possible that I'm not. Totally totally back up to full. Um, okay, so Carol, you take a big gasping breath as all of the burns on your body heal oh. and you are uh, fully healthy again. Uh, Malachi. Okay, so now we're not doing death saves, so we can come out of initiative. So, what are you guys going to do? What did you do, oh, Carol? That? What the hell was that? Why did you That's shoot that her? Was a, that was a fireball. That was a fireball. High level, higher level magic than we can do. Fitz is dead. Big, big scary magic. What? She's dead. No, 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 no. And no, I get up and Fitz. like walk away. I'm like, come on, Malachi, let's go. Leave this bitch here. And I walk no. off. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> what about Fitz? She's dead, Malachi. We'll come back. I gotta, I gotta we figure it out. can't just leave her. We'll I gotta, we gotta get something to cover up. We gotta call 911. We gotta call 911. Fitz is hurt. All right. Go ahead. I'll give him a call. I don't know how we, how they're gonna explain her being burned, but. Are you calling for police or ambulance? What do you say to them? Ambulance. Ambulance. Okay. Call my one. I don't know what you say. <laughs> <laughs> tell them what's going on. Just tell them someone uh, set up, someone's been set on fire. <laughs> okay, uh, ambulance uh, comes. It's a little bit hard to get to, so you kind of have to direct them. Um, they load up fits. Um, they kind of take a brief, ex, you know, description. You guys, what's your story? I guess. Um. Yeah, Nora didn't even see it happen. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Malachi did. I don't want to say uh, Carol might be hysterical at this point. Yeah, okay. Malachi is not probably not making a lot of sense because he's he's there's no way he's thinking of like a good legitimate excuse. Right. So he's just gonna say someone threw fire at her. Okay. Yeah, I mean I was okay. thinking like someone threw gas and started on fire for some reason. I don't right. know. Right. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but somebody threw fire at her and then she was just on the ground. Okay. Um, so the, uh, the paramedics uh, head off, the police arrive a little bit later, um, and uh, briefly collect your statements. They're obvious, you're obviously fairly hysterical slash not very giving meaningful information, um, but go ahead and everybody give me a deception check, please. Uh... Ooh. One crystal, I'm fed up. <laughs> Six. Oh, that's a seven. Oh, man. Five, six, wow. seven. I rolled a one. <laughs> Should I just par for the course right now? Let's be real. Like, okay. I don't need perfect. to be seeing anything at this moment. Okay, they're uh, they're gonna send a detective to follow up tomorrow. Um, you guys, uh, so you came, you all came here in Fitz's car. Her keys are on her. Um, so you're taking the bus back, or. Uh, <laughs> Uh, We're taking a separate bus from Carol. <laughs> <laughs> I think Carol's, Carol's car. Carol's car Carol's is back at the, at the place. Yeah. Yeah, I think Carol presumably just her car walking, is back there. Presumably, hopefully, in the right direction, but a little bit of a haze, so hopefully she makes it there. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. Well. Um. Milos is going to contact you in a week. So uh, they hospital calls uh, about an hour later and confirms that they could not resuscitate your friend and that she uh, she passed in spite of everybody's best efforts. Um, Renee. <laughs> Renee over there. <laughs> uh, and uh, you guys succeeded, so leveled up too. Yeah, I so, do. What can you do? 
It can be I'm upsetting. Dead. I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, it can be upsetting. Yeah, it is. It is upsetting. Like, I mean, I'm not going to lie and say I'm not sad because I am. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> hey, you know, it happens. 